Boom. Boom! What's going on, Go Getters? In this week's episode, we talk to Zach Kornfeld. Zach is a top tier salesman responsible for generating millions of dollars for his company. He's also a big time real estate investor and a world traveler. Yeah, guys, we hope you enjoy this podcast. Due to a bit of technical difficulties, we had a little bit of camera blurriness throughout this video, but the audio is perfectly intact and the video itself is watchable for the most part. We hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. We're still aiming for that big goal of 10K subscribers this year. So click that sub button if you haven't already. Much love. Peace. Boom. We got my dog, Zach Kornfeld, in this place, man. What up, what up? Zach, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How about you guys? Doing great. I appreciate you guys having me on. You know, yeah, absolutely. Man. We yeah. saw we saw a little bit what you got going on, and I've been hearing about you for a little while now too. <laughs> Thank That's you. Serious. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, we thought it was only right to yeah. get you on and talk talk business, talk money, talk travel, talk all that, talk your life, really. Yeah. So uh, you just came back from Cabo in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just came back from Mexico. Um, it was our company trip. I worked mm. for uh, Grit Marketing, and she did over two hundred thousand dollars in revenue. It was like. All paid for, flight, yeah. uh, inclusive resort. So it was pretty cool. That's uh, tough. How long were you down there for? I think it was like six days, uh, five nights, something like that. So man, it was pretty cool. I got a good tan going on right now. Yes, so sir. That Cabo vibe, man. That's crazy. I gotta get out. I gotta yeah. get myself out there. It's too cold down here. I'm looking yeah. a little pale right now. Gotta Yo, go get some sun. Um, your your family is the Woodlands, right? Yeah. So um, my dad's Mitch Cornfeld. Yeah. Um, you know, family of the Cornfelds. Mm. Um. They had the woodlands. I uh, kind of grew up in that whole mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up my whole life, I was always working. You know, I was mm-hmm. always out there with them, hustling. Yeah. Uh, not doing, like, manual stuff, like, manual labor. It was more of, like, my dad would be having, like, a wedding or, like, a you know hosting, whatever the mm. situation was. And my dad would just say, Zach, go introduce yourself, schmooze him up a little bit. Mm. So uh, my whole life, I kind of got introduced into just, like, you know, just talking and, you know, just making people feel good. He always told me it costs nothing to be nice or make mm. someone smile. So nice. Oh, he always, like, went a long way with me, so. That's a cool, th- those are cool, like, fundamental principles that your dad was teaching you at that time. 100%. Because yeah. right now, we got to talk about grit and, like, what you do there. Yeah, definitely. But right now, those skills that you've acquired as a young man made you generate, what, 1.6 mil? Yeah, our, our sales team, uh, this summer, we were out in Long Island, the trenches, yeah. and uh, <laughs> we started knocking May 6th, and I personally ended, like, August 7th, so in, like, three months, we did, like, 1.6 million. <laughs> so it was wow. pretty cool. Worked our ass off for that, so it was yeah. pretty nice, but, uh, you know, my dad's my best friend, so he, uh, my whole life, he mm. kind of just been putting, like, uh, I don't know, I grew up on, like, Peyton Manning's mentality, so I'm, like, a Colts fan, so my whole life, it was all about, like, work ethic, and, mm-hmm. you know... I have a little saying, today I'll do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. Mm. And uh, David Goggins has this little saying, you know, fight your inner bitch. Mm. And, uh, you know, if I ever feel like I don't want to do something, I kind of just, you know, think about my dad, think about what would he would do. Because mm-hmm. past 50 years, you know, he got, if, if I, you think I'm a hard worker, my dad's a complete, like, yeah. he's like. Different level. Different level. I mean, just to put in perspective, uh, I, don't, I mean, when he was like 12 years old, the woodland started, so. My dad would get waking up in the morning, go clean the cigarette and bottles like outside of the parking mm-hmm. lot, and then he'd go to school in Myers, and then a like a, a limo would pick him up from Myers, take him to the Woodlands, and then what he'd the be fuck? there till like nine o'clock, ten o'clock, working his ass off. So Damn. did that for like fifty years. He took over the business with his brothers, and uh, yeah, they be- became some legends in my opinion. Damn, so, that's okay. a young yeah, age. Yeah, to get after legends. That. I know the name Mitch Cornfeld from. I don't even know how I know that name, yeah. <laughs> and I know it somehow. But uh, how did your family get into that business? Yeah, like, so where did it start? My great, my grandfather, Mark Cornfield, mm. uh, he started it when he was about thirty years old. Mm-hmm. Basically, what happened was his my great grandmother Esther, his mom Esther, uh, had a pl- you know where movies fourteen is right? Yeah. There? So he had a place called the S and B, and it was kind of like a cared a catering place in mm-hmm. a restaurant, and they had that that was going crazy. Like everybody was going there, and then. Uh, uh, a wild, like a fire popped up in there and um, they took the insurance money mm-hmm. and my grandfather had this crazy idea to build a hotel, club, restaurant, you know, catering business on the side of the highway. And everybody was calling him crazy, uh, but he ended up doing it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. And then basically what happened was there was three brothers. Mm-hmm. There's My dad's the youngest of three. There's Rick. Uh, there's Ross. Mm. Sounds like Rick Ross, but there's Rick. <laughs> Ross, and then there's Mitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick took care of, like, the catering. Yeah. He did, like, the weddings, bar mitzvahs, whatever you want to call it. Ross, like, managed the hotel. Mm-hmm. 
And then my dad was more of the club and then restaurant scene. So mm. they kind of like a little saying we have is they divide and conquer. So divide it, and conquer. It's hard to like manage, you know, like everything at once. Yeah, so it's if a you big just, spot. Exactly. So if you just take your skill sets and you kind of just divide them and, you know, go 100 percent, it's divide and conquer. So, yeah, they killed it. Um, a lot of my friends, actually, a lot of my friends, parents met at the Woodlands. Uh just crazy to think like the impact that they've had in the yeah. area. Oh so. yeah, even to this day. I mean, you talk to a lot of people our age, like there's nowhere else to go or nothing else to do around here. Everybody goes to the woodland. So yeah, yeah. Back then, I hear there used to be like 700 people there a night. Yeah, so, I mean, you know. yeah. I my girlfriend's mom is Dee Dee. Okay. Uh, Darlene Mc or not Darlene Diane McFarland. <laughs> oh, I, think, I know you. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I, okay, I know Dee Dee. Yeah, yeah, she's the she's the bartender or waitress yes, right out there. Yeah. Okay. She's been there forever. Yeah, 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 of course. Part of the family. Are you kidding? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But um, can we talk about you guys, like, just sold it, right? Yeah, yeah. My dad recently, um, he's 57 right now, uh, sold that, you know. He Damn. sold it in January. It's been in the business or in the family for, like, 50 years. Uh, a couple years ago, they, they, like, felt like a mob scene. They, like, kind of brought the whole family together. Yeah. And they were like, who wants to take over? And, like, in reality... Um, my whole life, I'd introduce myself. I'd be like, hi, I'm Zach Kornfeld. And they'd be like, oh, you're Mitch's son. <laughs> and, you know, as much as I love that, it's just that even though I am Mitch's son, it, I'm Zach Kornfeld. Yeah. So it's like I kind of wanted to build my own legacy. Mm -hmm. So personally, it wasn't a good fit for mm -hmm. me. And I just didn't really want to stay in the area. Um, nothing wrong with it. I love the 570. You know, it made me the man I am. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there's just so much more out there um, that I just don't see myself staying here long term. Uh, yeah. And having, you know, a property like the woodlands and having to manage it i just couldn't see myself staying here and so i personally didn't want to take over um and yeah you know long story they just ended up selling it and my dad's ready to move to florida start tanning oh, but that's cool it, sailing off yeah it's cool to see him though i mean his whole life like i said um my dad would work four in the morning every mm. single night he'd be at, at the woodlands by Damn. 10 a.m so my whole life my dad's been a workhorse just absolutely grinding so it's cool. Like, just for example, before I left, he was sleeping on the couch. Like, I never saw that, ever. Like, of my, my dad has always been working. He's always been hustling, grinding. So to finally see him relax, it's, like, mm. it's just really rewarding to see, like, mm. see what he's accomplished. Like, yeah, I mean, you see how that work ethic pays off. 100%. It all it all worked out. Yeah. Sold that thing for some change, too. Some change. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't even know the price. He won't yeah. tell me. But Let's I, not I, talk I about it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> hey, it's up to hey, One day he'll tell me. Yeah. Though. But, uh, you know. That's he, crazy. So... What do you think, uh, where do you want to take your legacy? Do you have an idea? Do you know where you want to go? I have no idea where I, like, fully want to reside and, like, start a family. Yeah. Um, I'm only 21. I got a lot of a lot of places to still go and see. Um, but as of right now, I like to, people always ask me, where do you live right now? I like to kind of say I'm like a nomad. Yeah. Uh, just because, literally, I just keep traveling right yeah. now. So, like, with my job and stuff, and we'll get all into that. But I only work during, the like, four months during the summertime. Mm -hmm. And then the next, like, eight, nine months, I kind of just... You know, I'm financially free to do whatever I want. Damn, so, um, that's so cool, bro. Yeah, like, uh, like I just came back from Mexico. I was in like Michigan for a festival before that. Um, I was in like it's just like the whole list. I don't even know. I just got to take a look. But like, it's just cool. Um, before this job, I was never on the West Coast. Yeah. And our headquarters, uh, the Grit, is in Utah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a big skier too. So I try to make my way out in Utah a lot. Just good feeling, you know, to see everybody. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know where I want to go yet. Uh, one day, you know, maybe maybe Israel. I'm a big fan of. Uh, yeah. I'm Jewish, and maybe one day I'll reside in Israel for like a couple years or something. Yeah, just and to see what it's like. You've been. I have been. Uh, when I was 18 years old, my uh, I didn't go to college. Like yeah. I was, I was planning on going, so I took a gap year just to kind of like find mm. myself. And uh, that's a whole story if you want to get into that. But uh, basically, I went to Israel for a year. Uh, I was on a program, and it was wasn't really for me. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's my entrepreneur spirit, but I don't really like to be told what to do. Yeah. And I like to like, like kind of make my own, uh. make my own route, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was on a program for like two months. It was great. Um, it was great because in Israel, when you're 18, you could drink. Yeah. But like after a month of like just like drinking almost every day, it kind of got annoying. And I was yeah. like, this, this is this really what I want to be doing mm -hmm. with my life? So right. Right. I kind of like parted ways with the program. Um, I moved into this is all in Israel. Keep in mind, I uh, moved to. Uh, a hostel. I don't know if you guys know what a hostel yeah, yeah. is, but for all the people that don't know, a hostel is kind of like a place where people that are backpacking uh, the country on like a cheaper budget, mm. they stay there. So it's only like $20 a night. Mm -hmm. So I basically lived in this hostel for six months. But the cool thing is, uh, little did I know it was also underneath. It was the number one club in Jerusalem. So basically... Oh, 
I, my first night sleeping there, I had no idea the club was down there. It's a Thursday night, and in Israel, Thursday is like the Friday nights. So I'm just like sleeping, and all of a sudden I hear boom, 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 <laughs> boom. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I hear boom, boom, boom. It gets louder. So I like I get out of the bunk bed. I had like seven roommates yeah. all around the all around the world. Yeah. Uh, I go downstairs and I just see like like literally like fifty people just going crazy. And I'm like, what's happening here? Um, and yeah, it was a, it was a club. But the cool thing about living in a hostel is it was like a revolving door. Every day I'd meet someone new from like yeah. a different yeah. country, ethnicity, you know, religion, and every day it'd be a new person. And uh, it's cool now because I'm traveling a lot, especially when I start to go abroad. I have friends in Germany, I have friends in Romania, yeah. I have friends in Japan. You know, uh, it's just cool to think that from that experience, those six months, um, I got to meet all these people that I never would have met if I didn't decide to leave yeah. that program. Um, and I went from uh, originally just checking people into their room, and then I yeah. learned how to DJ. And like <laughs> after six months, that happened. So basically, um, then COVID hit. And this is, I'm in Israel in a foreign country, yeah. you know, and I had seven roommates and they all asked us to leave. Not that they didn't like us. It's just, they couldn't afford us anymore because yeah. of COVID. So, um, it's going to sound crazy, but I didn't know what to do. The flights, I couldn't fly home to America because the flights were done. What the fuck uh, do you do? Yeah. I didn't know what to do. So I basically just bought a tent and I <laughs> <laughs> literally just lived on all the beaches in Israel for like two months. Let's man. talk Whoa. about that, man. So yeah. you said for roughly two months you were doing that? Yeah. Every like, day. Yeah, like every day. Like it was cool because I'd wake up when the sun comes out. Yeah. Like, the tent like literally would just shine like the tent, like wow. the sun in. And then I'd go to bed when the sun would go down. And then in my daily routine was this. I'd wake up. I'd like, you know, meditate <clears throat> for like 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Um, I would hitchhike to like a, the closest gas yeah. station or whatever. Like literally with the thumb, like mm. hitchhike. Yeah. And uh, I'd give them my portable chargers for them to charge. And then I'd go away for like an hour or two. Yeah. I'd go work out. And then after I was done working out, I'd go pick up my portable chargers. And then I'd get like a can of tuna or like an avocado. Oh like, uh, I'd drink as much water as I can. And uh, dude, I would just like literally keep walking the beach until I the sun would go down. And I dude, how old home. are you at that time? I was like 18. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. So during that time in your life. Are you discovering new aspects of yourself? Are you coming to like new personal revelations? Are you evolving as a human with those conditions in yeah, a new country? Definitely. I mean, it was it was kind of funny because all my friends that were freshmen in high school, they had to like go home. You know, their college experience for their freshman year was mm. over. Well, meanwhile, I had a whole new chapter. And right. especially coming from like a family with a little bit more money. Um, when you literally only have a tent and like two portable chargers and you have to find your next yeah. meal mm -hmm. and like your water bottle or like it makes you just really appreciate the little things in life yeah mm -hmm. like like if someone like i'll never forget it when i during that time my cousin evan he was also in israel during the time and he invited me to go out for like a piece of like for pizza and mm -hmm. he paid for it and like it was just like i felt so grateful yeah just to eat a piece of pizza mm -hmm. and like keep in mind this whole time uh i asked my parents to cut me off so I had no money. Like wow. I was literally making my own money, like bartending at the club before that. So I only had like in like, I think it was like in American terms, like only like two hundred dollars to my name. So you asked them to do this while you were in, you were trapped in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but what's what's the decision behind that? That I seems don't know. like it was. I'm a crazy guy, and I just really wanted to just do it. You yeah, know? like not a lot of people could say they were like homeless in Israel and like lived on all the beaches with no money. It's but, a cool story, man. It's a very cool story. Yeah, but I made the most out of it. It was cool because. In Israel, like, COVID, they didn't really care about it that much. Yeah. You know, people would still go. Everything was shut down, but, mm -hmm. like, people would still go to the beaches and stuff yeah. like that. You know, it's year-round nice weather. So I'd see people, like, playing, like, soccer or, like, just yeah, playing football man. or, mm -hmm. like, whatever the situation is. And I'd go up to them, and I would just start talking. And yeah. I would just become friends with them. And then they, wow. would, they would just, like, offer me stuff. And I told them my story. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, yeah, come with us. So I'd hang out with them for a day. And then when they would leave the beach mm -hmm. to go home, I would just set up shop, put my tents up. and God pass out so it's very humbling man yeah it was it was the best thing that ever happened to me because like i said it just made me really appreciate mm. you know everything and yeah I, that i didn't really know what, like i don't know like uh, it was just really cool for me to like have nothing because yeah. my whole life i was kind of given everything yeah and to finally just be on my own and be independent and like literally just have to worry about finding your next yeah. like the only thing in my mind was okay we have to find food we have to find water. We have to find a good shelter. So yeah. it made me just like really appreciate the little things in life. Simulating chaos. That's crazy to think about, man. 
yeah, I, it's, it also simplifies like the problems that you have. Yeah. You know? like, oftentimes we get worked up over shit that's like trivial. Yeah. And so complex and we make it up in our minds. But when those are your problems and when that's your yeah. life, it's like when you're waking up on to the sunrise in Israel yeah. on the beach and you, you got to find your next meal. You're not you're not thinking about what so and so said about you on Instagram. You know, yeah. it was actually really funny. I'll never forget it. When I was in when I was on the beaches, uh, you know, remember the whole George Floyd thing? With like yes. the, yeah, I wake up one morning and I go on my phone and this is like two, three, maybe even like four days without being on my phone. And I'm scrolling through it. I see a bunch of black boxes. Yeah. And I, I didn't have any news or media. I'm like, what the hell are all these black boxes about and it was like apparently the whole george floyd Damn, thing so I, I i'll never forget that i'm like is my phone glitching because like every, every yeah, time not I scroll, knowing what's going on that'd probably be freaky yeah, just pop on instagram yeah. one day that was the best part them. honestly not knowing what's going on in yeah. the world and just kind of like focusing on yourself being disconnected that's nah, the best feeling ever man that's so cool and that really inspires me to travel more man yeah like, I, I need to get out and do that more i, I went to europe uh in 21 and we stayed in Greece for a little while. We stayed in Athens, Greece, and we stayed in really? hostels and stuff like that. Yeah. And for that time, we were just eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and bread and oranges. And that was just like that type of grit. It's, it's, it, it, it makes everything else quiet. See, like, this is all I have to worry about, you know? And then there's like sunsets and there's views and mountains and it just yeah. it's like a beautiful way to live. And so it's so organic and natural. You're probably like a couple hours ahead in america like oh it's, uh like six or seven hours yeah so that's how it was in israel like israel and, Gre- and like greek greece is like two hour flight so it's not that wow, far wow. from each other so same time zone but it's really cool to be seven eight hours ahead because while you're waking mm. up all your friends are going to bed yeah so you don't really care about posting or like yeah. you know you know communicating with anyone there you kind of just focus on yourself and just stay in the present mm. moment um so yeah, that's the. Uh, it's cool being a couple hours ahead, and you know, just kind of like focusing on yourself. That's cool, man. Where else have you traveled? Like, where outside of the country have you traveled? Um, on my own or like with my family? Just in general. Like okay, yeah. Countries. Went to Jamaica when I was a little younger. It, well, I wasn't old enough to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, um, that's when I discovered Xbox. So for like five, uh. days, <laughs> like five days, like. Meanwhile, I'm in like a beautiful resort. I was just in the game room like, yeah. playing Call of Duty yeah. for like five Getting minutes. After it. Yeah, playing 2K and stuff. It was like <laughs> the classic enough. 2K with Michael. Like I think it was 2K12. You know, like yeah. with Michael Jordan on it. Like that was the best one. Um, Turks and Caicos. Uh, but I just got. I went to Mexico last year for the first time. I went to Tulum. I stayed at like a cool meditating resort. So that was mm. like that was pretty gnarly. Um, Mexico, where have I been? Mainly Israel. Uh, that's my favorite. I haven't really been abroad as much as I want to. Mm. Um, but in America, I've been almost every state right now. That's and insane, man. Just traveling. Yeah, by far my, my favorites, if I'd have to say, are like Utah. Um, Utah, Colorado. that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I like skiing. And like I said, oh, like, yeah, and yeah. Like the, the headquarters for grids out there. Yeah. So like I have a lot of friends out there, like literally like yeah. 400 people. And like they're just, you know, free. They can do it. They don't have work because like. Yeah. They can just do whatever they want. So if we want to go skiing one day, we can. If we want to oh, want to go to a jazz game, mm-hmm. we can. Like whatever it is. Uh, Colorado's number two, and then I got a big ski spot. Yeah, I, I love Colorado. Uh, I have a lot of buddies that go to school in Boulder or Regis. Mm-hmm. So um, we just go out there. We hang out with them. Have like just reminisce. Um, That's dope. Smoke weed. <laughs> a little bit i dabble with it. You know, not gonna lie. You know, I'll take a couple hits here yeah, and yeah. there, but it, you know, it's good feeling. But. Yeah. Um, I do when I'm skiing. I'll tell the you that. The skiers delay. I was just gonna say. <laughs> I just That's saw. Every I, I, I just saw this funny ass meme, and it was uh, like the ski resorts in the morning at like 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. and it's just like a bunch of pot. Oh, I, just, like, I, I think you that. shared that, right? Yeah, you I, it? I was cracking up watching yeah. that. that and I was funny. like, yeah, that's like right on the dot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then Florida's number number three, just for like yeah. the nightlife and just the weather as a whole. So mm. that's cool, man. So I got. I, I want to know uh, how did you get into working with grit? Yeah. Um, so keep in mind, like, I'm in Israel, um, freshman, technically a freshman in college, if you want to put it in terms like that. And when I, I literally had like the great, even though I had nothing in Israel, it was like the greatest time of my life because it made me really appreciate what I did have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I literally went from having like the greatest year of my life in Israel to coming home to America to like a bunch of like parents being like, okay, you're not going to school. You have to figure out what you want to do. You can't live here. You're cut off. Like what's we have like what are you gonna do with your life? So it was like a lot of like pressure was coming towards me. So I said, fuck it. I'm gonna move to Colorado Springs. Yeah. Um my buddy started a junk removal business. And oh shit. It was cool. called uh Junkin' Hall. And mm. he basically sold me on it saying, You you're an entrepreneur. Uh 
you can come out there. You'll it's it's a startup. I started. it. You'll see what it's like to start a business, and you can work with me. You'll be my right hand man. So I was like, bet, sign me up. So I went out there. I was making eleven dollars an hour, and I actually went without knowing if I was gonna have. I didn't. I, I went not having a place to live yet. Mm. I just told my parents I'll figure it out when I get there. Don't worry about it. I'm a, I'm a figure it out. Wow. And I basically went on Facebook Marketplace and I found this girl named Kim. Shout out Kim. She's like 34 year old. Um, I doctor assistant, and she also had two other roommates named Tatiana, who was a, a banker, and then another guy named, uh, or it was a girl named Melissa, and I think she was a middle school teacher or a high school teacher. But basically, me living in Colorado with like these thirty-four year old <laughs> ladies and stuff. Yeah, that gotta be interesting. It was like very interesting. I'm eight, I'm like nineteen now. I'm nineteen. Okay. Oh and, yeah. And uh, you know I'm a little younger and stuff, but like it was a blessing to not go to school because this is this is how it happened. I would come home from doing junk removal around like seven, seven o'clock, okay? Everybody else would come home around like seven twenty. Mm. They would just come home immediately, go right to the fridge, open up a white claw, slug them down, sit in the in the living room, and they would all complain about their day. Mm. All they would do is complain. And like this happened, this I hate my job, I hate it. Zach, don't go to school. You're doing it right. And it was just like mind-boggling to me because here all my friends are in school like like trying to achieve what these people already achieved mm. Mm. and, and these hate people themselves. hate it yeah. they hate yeah. their lives yeah. like all and literally you know that saying where it's like we live for the weekend like fucking yeah that's all these people did was live for the weekend and i just knew i was doing i and this is before i had any money or you know knew what i was doing but i just knew like I, god put me on the right path like i yeah. knew i was doing something right and you were fresh out of high school at the time right yeah it was just right, right when i came home from israel so before you got in i guess before you ended up traveling to go do that did you have any like entrepreneurial spirit behind you at the time like what did you think you were going to be doing yeah yeah so i was like really like big on the clothing brands yeah um so actually living in israel i was looking at like the sunsets one day mm -hmm. and i just thought to myself like a sunny island and then like that i was just like "Ooh, that's a good name and then i was like i'm gonna start a clothing brand so um moving out to colorado like i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna build a clothing brand called sunny's island so while i was in colorado like mm. doing the junk removal i was also taking my real estate license in colorado that was like more for my parents they mm. just wanted me to do that mm -hmm. i didn't really want to be a realtor or anything like that but I was like working on this brand called Sunny's Island. So while I'm in Colorado, you know, I'm working on that yeah. and stuff. And I did like only one drop ever and it, we sold a hundred. So it was like pretty cool. I had a lot of like local support. So that's that, cool. It was cool to see that people really like see the vision mm -hmm. in me. I guess. Are you still into that kind of stuff? That's like more my passion project. Yeah. Right now I'm like a hundred percent into grit just because um, <laughs> I saw this. Uh, I don't know if it was like some motivational guy, whatever on Instagram, <coughs> but he was saying instead of like focusing on multiple sources of income, just focus like a hundred percent on one. And then that will like eventually just blow up. Yeah. So that's my passion project. Like my main goals in life is not to be, you know, a salesman. <coughs> it's yeah. to like ch chase my dreams. Mm. And uh, before I could like fully chase my dreams, I have to like eat shit now so I can eat caviar later. And uh, <laughs> I want to be a, a DJ one day and I want to have my own clothing brand one day. Wow. So that's like the main goal, but that's like mm. 20 years down the road. But for right now, eat shit now so I can eat caviar later. Um, wow. But then anyways, I'm in uh, Colorado and my buddy... This is the biggest shout out I'll ever get in my life. Shout out Claudio Sabahano. I don't know if y'all know him. He's the go. Claudio goat. Sabahano. He calls me and I'm in Colorado. He's like, Zach, I made $28,000 last summer going door to door selling pest control. I'm like, bullshit. Hung up. I was like, that's, that's like, sounds like the biggest yeah. scam I've ever heard in my life, right? Like, that's everybody's first, you know, initial thought. You're crazy if you don't think that. And literally, he kept hitting me up for like two months. Like, Zach, you got to do it. Why would I ever steer you in the wrong direction? And I'm like, ah. and then finally one day I'm like lifting, like I'm in this old lady's house, lifting like a, a couch up her stairs and she's just bitching me. Like She's just yelling at me. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. And I, <laughs> I called Claudio. I'm like, yo, show me your pay stub. Show me that you actually made this money and we'll, let's get it done. And I was like, and he was like, finally, he's like, you're a very hard worker and you're a very talkative person. You're very charismatic. So I think you're going to do great with it. So long story short, I signed up with a, a company called uh, EcoShield. So that was like the first company I started yeah. with. Mm -hmm. And um, they sent me. So basically the way. For, I, so basically I work for a door to door company now called Grit Marketing. And we are subcontractors for Aptive Environmental, which is the sixth largest pest control company in the nation. And 
you get sent to random cities yeah. during the summertime. So we only worked May till August, and I got sent to Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Only thing I knew Omaha. was I knew Omaha. Omaha. That was Omaha. Like, oh, yeah, there comes Peyton Manning. That's all I knew. Full circle. That's all I knew. So I, uh, I even had to look it up on the map. It's literally like dead center, right in the middle of the country. So, um, I got signed down to Omaha, Nebraska, and I was like preparing my ass off for it, and I just knew I was gonna be amazing at it. Like mm-hmm. there was no doubt in my mind yeah. that I was gonna be average. I don't think same with you guys. Like I don't think I'm an average human. I think yeah. I'm a pretty above average kind of guy for sure. So I said. Fuck it, we're gonna go a hundred percent into this, and um, I was the number one rookie in two twelve, which was Eco Shields region, and I did three hundred thousand mm. dollars in revenue, and then I got to take home around like thirty three percent. So, from from being homeless in Israel, what's that number? That's eighty eight grand. So that was like nineteen years old, working four months, but like it wasn't like easy. It was literally like eleven yeah. hour work days, six mm. days a week. Working my absolute ass so off. So you're grinding for eating four shit. months. So yeah, I was eating shit. Yeah. yeah. No social media. Yeah. Like I was just like fully devoted on myself. The only person I was in contact with was my mom and dad. Yeah. And that was about it. And I just worked my fucking ass off for that. So then anyways, I made all this money and then I got recruited by Grit. Grit Marketing. Ego Shield's like 17 years in business. Um, but Grit Marketing is like a pre-seed startup. Yeah. They, they do the same thing, pest control, whatever. But they kind of like the dream team mm. of it. They kind of like poach the top salesmen and reps from every other mm. company and bring them to the grit. Mm. So it's like, I always say this, would you rather be surrounded by a guy that's doing like two, three sales a day? Or would you rather be surrounded by guys that are doing nine, ten sales a yeah. day? Yeah. Obviously, you want to be around the nine, ten. Because mm-hmm. if they're doing nine, ten, then you could probably do seven, eight, mm. you know, instead of doing like one, two, like I yeah. was at the other company. So um, I went to grit marketing and... It was just awesome. Like they're sponsored with the Utah Jazz. Mm. They have corporate ski passes. Uh, <coughs> everything you kind of want, it's there. Uh, it's kind of like I always describe like what I do now. Like if there were stockbroker, like if stockbroker was still a thing in today's world, yeah. Like that's kind of like the equivalent of it is like the door to door pest control world. Mm. Like if I was born in the '80s, I'd most like or in like the the '60s, '50s, '70s, whatever, I'd probably be a stockbroker. That's, int- that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, that's how I kind of it's like yeah. the stockbroker because it's all a bunch of eighteen through. You know, 28 year olds making like anywhere from like 50 to like three, 400 grand. So it's like Mm. just a bunch of young, ambitious people. Um, And yeah, I mean, that's like when I was in Mexico, it was like for the only the elite salesman. So like for the first time in my life, I'm surrounded by 200 literally kids, like 18 through like 29 year olds who are making like, like bare minimum Mm. 100 grand to like 4 million. So I'm surrounded by all these guys and I'm like, wait, I got to work my ass off. But, uh, Anyways, back to, like, uh, so I go to the grit, and I'm like, yo, this is, like, an amazing, like, <laughs> and then he made 88 grand in four months. That's, like, more than, like, yeah. 75% of America makes. Like, I, th- I think the ba- like the average income in America is, like, 40 grand. That's over, yeah, it's, like, like roughly two times grand. the annual so, income. And I did that in four months. So I literally, I hop on the phone. I call every motherfucker I know. I'm like, yo, you got to do this. Yo, you got to do this. You got to do this. And literally, just like sales, you know, most people are like, nah, I'm good, man. I yeah. got an internship, whatever. I'm like, your internship is nothing compared to this, but all right. Or I got school, whatever. It's like, okay, I understand that. You got your own goal. But long story short, um, I brought a team of like 40 guys out and we went out to Long Island, New York. Mm. Um, and like you're, the thing with like door to door sales, it's not easy. You know, it's fuck no. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would do it. What's the trick to it? Like, what do you think that you like? How did you master the sale? Yeah, I mean, it's just work ethic, man. It's all about adjusting. You know, mm. like if you're in a neighborhood where it's, you know, like a rich ass neighborhood, you got to learn instead of saying like, oh, you know, I work for. Instead of saying I work for, you say I do work for. So it's like the little small things. Yeah. But in reality, it's just work ethic. Uh, mm. That's why I was like very hyped to be on this podcast called The Go-Getters because like literally like the grid is just full of go-getters. Yeah. Or even the whole door-to-door industry is like mm. a bunch of go-getters. Just like-minded, ambitious people that just want to succeed and uh, just conquer the world, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's no real trick to it. It's just work ethic. I always say you need three things to succeed in door-to-door. Uh, the first one's confidence. That's just a fact. Because For sure. You're not going to ram the people's doors. If you knock on someone's door and you're like, hi, how you doing? Yeah. Zach, nice to meet you. They're going to shut the door in your face. Mm-hmm. But if I knock on the door, I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm Zach. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey, you work for John. They're going to respect yeah. you right there. Right. You know, you know, their guard is a little bit lowered now. So first one's confidence. Second one's energy. Because you're out there knocking in like the summer. Yeah. You know, middle of August. It's like 100 degrees. Oh, shit. Yeah. And you're knocking from 1 o'clock till <laughs> 9 o'clock at night, six right. days a week. And it's all sales. It's like door to it's sale. It's all sales. It's a numbers game. So in reality, you're knocking on 50 people's doors. Like 45 of them are telling you no. Right. Some are saying fuck off. Yeah. Others are saying I'm gonna call the cops. On. Like yeah. So you just need to keep that energy to keep going. Kind of like 
weave through the bullshit, bob and weave that until you get that yes, because one yes outweighs 20 no's. Yeah. So um, mm. I'd say energy is the second one. But then the third thing, and without the third one, you you won't succeed, is work ethic. Right. Um, we could teach you all about confidence. We could teach you all mm. about energy. But you either got work ethic or you don't. Yes. You know? And that was something that I learned this year because – Last year, I was just calling everybody I knew, like, Son, come out, come out. So mm. we started with, like, 40 guys. And then after the first two weeks, like, either we had to let go of or people left on their own. So, like, another, like, 15 kids left. Um, it just wasn't cut out for them. Yeah. Um, so we ended up finishing with, like, 18 guys. And we did the 1.6 million. So <laughs> pretty cool. And then this year, I made around, like, you want me to say the number? Say right. it. Come sure. on. Let's go. I mean, that's up to you. Yeah, no, like, 190. It. So it was pretty 200 cool. 200 bands. Yeah, basically. In like, four months. Yeah, it was, well, I mean, I worked a lot in the offseason recruiting and training and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it changed my life, man. And, like, that's why I'm very, like, but this year I'm being a little bit different with how I recruit. I'm not just calling anybody. It's, like, now we have, like, a whole interview process because I really just want those guys that are hungry, that really just fucking yeah. want it. You know what I mean? Like, those guys yeah. that were, like, those guys that, I like kids who have chips on their shoulders because yeah. I had a chip on my shoulder. It, every kid that always had a chip on their shoulder, for some reason, always does fucking amazing. Mm. They were like in their backs against the wall. I like to find kids that, not saying didn't go to college, because I had a lot of kids that went to college that did great. Like, shout yeah. out to Dove Driver. He paid off his, like, uh, tuition at Penn State this year. So oh, nice. Shout out my boy to Dove. And he's an aerospace engineer. <laughs> oh, so if he's, a, he's not like a, he's not a business guy. He's yeah. an aerospace engineer, but he has work ethic. Mm. Everybody thinks when you're a salesman, you just have to be a talkative guy. Mm. No, like, most, most of the talkative guys suck because they just don't have work ethic at the oh, end of the day. I think that's me. They, it, all good. But, uh, yeah, it just literally just comes down to work ethic. And um, if you have that work ethic and if you just have – we call it a why. Mm. A why is very important yes. because when it's 100 degrees out and fucking Karen threatened to call the cops yeah, on yeah. you and you got told you have no deals and it's 5 o'clock and – You're away from home. And you're away from home. You know, you haven't seen your girlfriend. You haven't seen your parents in a while. And that park bench right there is looking real comfortable, you know. <laughs> what, what's going to push you from to keep going? Like, yeah. what's going to push you to, like, just keep grinding? Mm -hmm. Like, say, fuck that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, that inner bitch in you. Like, what are you going to do to, like, conquer that? Yeah. And my why, personally, my first year was I went to Scranton Prep. So yeah. it's like a Catholic Jesuit high school. You mm -hmm. know, their mission is to send you to school, like the college. Right. I'll never forget, when I was sitting at graduation, they said, congratulations to all students. 99.6% of our students are attending higher education. What do you think that point four was? <laughs> this guy right yeah. here. So... That was my why. It was like, I had a lot of doubters at the time. Uh, even though I had a lot of support, it was weird. It was like a mix. But that was my reason. If, if I had a bad day, I just kept thinking to myself, are you really Are you really what these people think you are? And I just kept pushing through it. Just kept pushing, pushing through it. And um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, just like circling back, it, it just work ethic. Mm. Like if you have work ethic and you will succeed. Um, there's no doubt about that. Can you acquire work ethic? Is that, a, is that a thing you can you can attain, you can get better at, or is it, is it like binary, ones and zeros? Yes. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, you ever meet a real lazy motherfucker and then he, he turns into a savage? I'll use a good example right now, and this will probably fuel him up. So if you're listening, I, I don't know if I should say his name. Tap in. Let's, let's, let's call him out right now <laughs> for being a lazy motherfucker. I'll call him out. Yo, Noah, shout out my boy. I'm not going to say his last name, right, but, Noah. Shout, but shout out Noah. Yes, sir. Um, the first time I ever met this guy, it was like he knocked with me. He's he's knocked with me my like my whole career. Mm. Um, he did terrible his first year, yeah. like absolute garbage, mm -hmm. and he mo ended up moving to Utah his second year, and he never went to the gym or anything. And now yeah. he, now he's just dialed six a.m. You know he's he's up. He's at the gym. You know he's there for at least two hours. He's in the sauna. He's running. Mm. He's doing everything he can to just succeed. I mean, you have these stories like we have this thing called uh, most improve, uh, mm. and I know this kid that once did. $100,000 in revenue, not take them, just do yeah. 100000 And then his second year, he did like $450,000 in revenue. So Fuck. I think, you know, it's not an overnight thing where, you know, one day you just wake up and you're like, let's, my life's changed. I think you have to go through trials and errors yes. in order to, you know, achieve that true potential. Mm. Um, like I said, it, like, if I'm being honest, I got kicked out of a lot of stuff growing up because mm. I was just a wild kid. I have a lot of energy. So yeah. it's like, like I said, I don't like being told what to do. I almost yeah. got kicked out of prep like 18 different times just for like <laughs> stupid shit. Yeah. I got kicked out of sleepaway camp uh, when I was younger. I got kicked out of a program I was on. And that was the greatest stuff to ever happen to me because if those didn't happen, I wouldn't be the guy I am today. Yeah. And 
you know, like I said, if I didn't get kicked out of sleepaway camp, I wouldn't have had my friend Noah's mom calling me a, like a, a burnout. Or I, I wouldn't mm. have had her saying, you're a piece of shit. You have yeah. nothing going for you. And yeah. that's the shit that sticks in the back of my head when I, like, I do cold plunges now. It's like, yeah. you think I want to jump in a fucking tub of ice? No. Talk to him. No. Fuck no. No. <laughs> Shit's cold. <laughs> I do not want to. But I do it. Because, yeah. not that I have to, it's just that. I tell my inner bitch to suck my dick. There you go. And that goes for everything. That goes for working out. Fuck yeah. That goes for waking up early. That goes for going to bed on a good time. That goes for just being a good son. That goes for being a good brother. I have a team of almost 50 guys now going into this next summer. It's like, I'm going to, it's not about me anymore. Yeah. It's about my guys. Yeah. Like my first summer knocking, it was all about me. All right, Zach, come on. Me, 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 me. But then after you, after I learned this year and I had my trials and errors being a manager, it's like. You have to learn that it's not all about you at this point. You have 17 guys looking up to you. Yeah, they rely on you. You have to take care of them, man. If you don't, then, you know. Ship sinks. Ship sinks, man. Yeah, yeah. bro. Like, basically, I went, it's not about me at this point. So if my guys see me taking a cold plunge, if they see me working out, if they see me in the sauna, if they see me, like, not blacking out, drinking every night like half the kids I know. Heck like, yeah. Then maybe, hopefully... Maybe if it's just one kid that gets inspired by that, then I did what I had to do. Yeah. Man. Like I don't even like posting on social media, but I do it because you know how many times I post something and I'll get a DM or I'll get like a, right. a text saying, "Man, thank thank you for doing that." Yeah. Like that just by you being yourself is inspired me. It's a, it's cool to think I got a cool text by my my friend Goose the, like literally yesterday. And Goose, Goose cool name. Shout out Goose. <laughs> yeah, he's from Arizona. I knocked with him in Long Island. Of course Island, he so is. Shout, yeah, shout out my guy. <laughs> I got a beautiful text from him, and it was just saying, "Man, I just want to say thank you for being you and just you know pushing yourself to the yeah. max because it makes me just want to you know see my true potential." And my main goal this year, I'm coming different as a manager, is to literally extract as much as I can out of my guys for their own benefit because. Listen, they're all they're all eighteen to twenty two, okay? And do you wanna be a piece of shit or do you wanna be like a goat? And like everybody wants to be an entrepreneur or everybody wants to have their own business or everybody yeah. wants to be an influencer until it's time to put in the work. Yes. And then the second they get a taste of that work, that nine to five sounds real good because mm. now you're at home at five o'clock yep. and you have six hours to do whatever you want. You don't mm-hmm. have to worry. So I hate, you know, all, there's a lot of talk in today's world, man, yes. but no one ever backs it up. So my goal is to find the people that actually back it up and build an empire. Mm. And, and until we build that empire, mm. you know, we're just going to keep grinding and we're going to keep hustling and we're going to keep. Yeah. Today I will do what others won't. So tomorrow I can do what others can't. And uh-huh. that's probably the coolest part about doing this podcast so far is like it weeds out a lot of the bullshit and the talkers out of your life. Like the people that really say that they want something that really aren't trying to push towards obtaining anything. And you meet a lot of people that are trying to obtain shit. That's the coolest part about doing this pod. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, like, like, just being surrounded. All right, so I always say, if you're surrounded by five kids that, and like, I'm not against drinking. I don't want anyone to think that, like, I'll go out to the bar, I'll have mm. a good time, you know what I mean? But, like, you know, there's comes a point where it's too much. Yes, you know? OD. If you're surrounded by five kids that are drinking, they're smoking, they're, like, 24-7, I'm saying, if they're complaining, mainly negative people yes. is where I'm, like, kind of, like, say here. You're probably going to be that six negative guy. Am I right or wrong? Mm, yeah, for sure, bro. You say that all the time. For sure. And now if you're surrounded by five kids that are waking up six in the morning, hitting the gym, they're grinding, yeah. they have goals, affirmations, you know, manifesting, meditating. If you're, they're doing all that. I know it sounds cliche because everyone sees it on Instagram these days, but it's, yeah. it's real. It's real. That's it fucking real. works, man. Yeah, it, that's real. It, it really works. Um, then guess what? You're going to be that six guy that follows that lead and you're just going to become a better person. And yeah. like shout out the CEO of Grit or he's like one of the main guys. His name's John Taylor. That man, his definition of life is just to, you know, be the best version of himself. And straight edge guy, but man, let me tell you, that guy is the definition of a workhorse. He'll, mm. he'll do anything in order to get the task done. And those mm. are, like, that's why I want to be around, you know? Absolutely. And like, for me, like, I think school, college is great. You know, like a lot of my friends have great experience. Like they're networking, they're meeting a lot of great people and stuff. Yeah. And it, so it's not for me, but like, why am I taking advice? Like, why would I take advice from... A business teacher that has never never done never business. has yeah. never done business. It's Bro, like experience I, is everything in this world, and as long as you experience, that's that's yeah. all that matters. You know. I went to college. I dropped out my first semester. I was studying entrepreneurship, and I was studying entrepreneurship from a guy who never owned a business. Yeah, and why are you studying entrepreneurship? Why <laughs> yeah. when you can just go do it? You know, like you're yeah. gonna learn more by failing. You know, like. And that's just a fact, man. Like, listen, sure. every business, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, what is it, like, 90% of businesses fail? Yep. I mean, but 
besides Elon Musk, if you look at every other entrepreneur, they've all failed at a business before. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe like Jeff Bezos or like that's except to the top, top 1%. Mm-hmm. But if you look at actual like entrepreneurs that you'll see in your every day to day or they've all failed yes. and they learn from those mistakes. And, you know, ultimately they just, you know, execute on what they've done wrong and they just flip flop it around. I don't know. Like just to give you an idea, man, like everybody has ideas, but no one ever executes, you know? So I have this like little quote right here. Execution is everything. People always have ideas, but never pull the trigger. Just shut the fuck up, put your head down and make it happen. Mm. That's the background of my phone. Mm. Bro, you're firing me up right now. Real knuckle dragon motherfucker. I just want to <laughs> do some push ups right now or something, bro. Yeah. This shit's fire. Yeah, and like I said, man, it's like it's not like that I want to jump in a fucking like thirty degree tub. We should have before the pod. We should have just do more than let's, welcome. Let's do it afterwards. I'm in, I'm in town it. for the next couple of weeks. You Fuck yeah. Let's go do an ice bath. Right I've never done one yet, but I really want to. You're more to. than welcome to come do How it. How long are you staying in the tub for? So you're only supposed to get like 11 minutes a week. So I get like in there for like two. 11 weeks. minutes a week? That's really? all you need, man. I've never heard that That's before. I've never heard need, it either. But. All you need is 11 minutes a week. So I go in there for like just two minutes a day. So all I do, all you need is two minutes a day, man. And it's crazy because in reality, how long have we been talking right now? Like, it's 40. 40, 40 minutes. So, dude, like, we could have done 20 of those, like, 20 ice baths in that 40 minutes. So, it's like, sometimes I'll be sitting on the couch, and I'll be like, oh, man, it's been four minutes. Like, oh, I could have done two ice baths in that four yeah. minute time. So, it's like, yeah. even if I don't want to do it, obviously, I tell my inner bitch. Shout yeah. out David Goggins. It's not my quote, but it's yeah. David Goggins, okay? But, like, uh, I'll be sitting on the couch, and I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then mm. I'll look, and then two minutes will go by, and then I'm like, I could have been out by now. Yeah. So I, it's just all about like the worst part of an ice bath is just like the twenty seconds before yep. you go in, and then Getting once yourself you, to do it, yeah, and then once, and that goes for everything. Like you ever like I'll just say use soccer as example. Like growing up, like even though I played soccer, like, yeah, it was a bitch for my mom to get me to go to soccer practice. But then once I got there, I loved it. Yeah, mm. I think that that was for like a lot of things, wrestling practice, whatever it was for me. So that's like most things in the world. I feel like that people look down upon. Well, no, I won't say look down upon necessarily, but most things that people like try to shy from, like say like fitness or the sauna or like that, the cold plunge. Like yeah. it's like nobody wants to do it until you're there. And he and I talk about it all the Let's time. Do it. Like, yeah, no, I'll definitely do the cold we'll plunge. Yeah, yeah, we'll but you'll in. never regret getting a workout in. Like there might be days you're like, oh, I don't really want to go work out today. But you'll never regret it when you're there. Never once will you regret that. Never, man. I mean, let's put out an intro for this video. Just getting out of the tub. Just yeah. <laughs> shit, hey, man, I'm, I'm down, bro. Let's hey, do it. It's awesome. I'll try it. Fuck yeah. I, I love it. I mean, like it's literally just the 20 seconds before you get in there. But then once yeah. you're in there, it's uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and I. Like I'm a, it, uh, that's why I love being, you know, that you asked for me to come on the podcast. I literally, literally listen to Joe Rogan. I'm literally li- listening to the Mike Baker one right now. He's a CIA. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I literally listen to him like every day. And uh, he, he's been talking about the cold plunge and I don't got like the $10,000 cold plunge. I literally, it just goes to show, even if you don't have, the, <laughs> even if you don't have the money to do it, man, there's always a way. If there's the a will, there's a way. And I just literally, I gave my brother my credit card. I was like, go to Lowe's, give me the biggest ice or the biggest trash can they have. Yeah. And then we'll let, we'll put water Woo! in it. And I was God, like, I'm about to get in that shit. I know, bro. I'm getting cold right yeah, now. Literally, thinking about that mother, back. mother Nature does the rest, you know? Like, Ooh, literally, yeah. it just, you'll see it. There's ice in it. Like, oh, yeah. Did you just start doing it now? I like, did it in the beginning of January. So I've been like a month and a half in. And dude, like, Obviously, I, and it was cool. In Mexico, they had one. In Mexico. Yeah, so, yeah I saw like, I, I thought saw. I thought I was going to miss out on that. And no, they had like a little like a uh, hot, it was like a hot tub, but with cold water in it. So, so you doing, are you doing that every day? Yeah, every day, man. Damn. Yeah. What's that doing? For, like what, or do you start your day off with that? Uh, so I have to, uh, so I, um, I have a girlfriend now, so it's like sometimes I'll wake up at her house and then from there I'll go right to the yeah. gym. And then, so I kind of do it like after my workout. Mm. I know that's kind of like some people will frown upon that because it just, it's not good for your muscles. It, it, it's good for your muscles, but it's better to do it right when you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Or it, it's it's not good to do it after a workout. Yeah. I guess that's the right That's word. what I'm cold starting to hear now. Cold not good for after workouts. Yeah. yeah. But, if uh, you start every day off with a fucking cold plunge, though, <laughs> man, imagine, <laughs> imagine savage. what you can overcome. <laughs> I, did it, I did it like an hour and a half ago. <clears throat> yeah. And like just the benefits of it like are insane. Like... I have s- more energy than ever. Really? Like, that's just a fact. Like more energy than ever, and like I don't drink. I don't use. I don't drink caffeine or anything like that. Like mm. I, it's just like that's like for my whole life. Mm. Like I've drank maybe during the summer if I needed like a boost or something like that. But like this is like my replacement for caffeine. You yeah. all just see that I new think- study that came out about energy drinks, how it's like making people go balder. So no, it's like, no, that's really? a wild. Yeah, 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 I just saw that. I recently. think you not that not about the energy drink thing, but I think you mentioned that to me before about, cause I love coffee. I drink coffee every morning. Yeah, and yeah. He literally Nothing said, wrong with it. Nothing wrong. he said, uh, 
like imagine that cold plunge like he, he was like you won't need that coffee no more or some shit like that but yeah. that's a good point though like nothing probably fires you up more than that Bro, you don't need it when you get in that tub right because i did a couple ice baths but did, did your nuts get so cold yeah but so the first time i ever did it actually Ooh, that's the worst part. Uh, I swear to God, I don't know how this happened, but it's like, I swear my nuts were like stuck to my thigh. <laughs> and I was like, hey, yo. They <laughs> froze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was like, I mean, that was like, okay, if this is the worst thing that happens when I hop in there, if my nuts mm. get stuck to my thigh, then I guess there could yeah. be worse shit happening in my <laughs> yeah. life. But uh, right. I don't know. So I'd say like energy is definitely up there. I sleep better, man. My skin's smoother. Um, oh, yeah. I d- and here's the best thing. So I'm like Middle Eastern, so like my like ethnicity and yeah. stuff like that. I'm from Israel. And... I literally last year when I was traveling, when I first got all the money and stuff, I was going to like warm places because I just couldn't stand the fucking cold. Mm -hmm. Like I hate the cold, man, except when I'm skiing, but keep in mind, I'm all layered up and Mm -hmm. stuff. So one thing about doing the ice bath, which is like very awesome is you just, you're not as cold as you normally are. Yeah. Like that makes sense. Like, like this is the best winter I've ever had in my Mm -hmm. life just because I don't feel as cold as I normally did in the years past or prior. Like now I feel I just feel good. I don't even feel cold anymore. Like, yeah, I'm obviously like cold, shivering mm. sometimes, but it's like, you ever wake up and you're like, oh, it's fucking 20 degrees out right now. Yeah. And you just don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. Got to throw the jacket on or some shit. After doing know. the ice bath, I don't have that thought anymore. I just wake up. It's a normal day. Yeah. It's a normal summer day for me in, mm. my, in my head. It's all, mm. everything in life is mental, bro. Like, we have the saying, bro, never get too excited where you're at a 10 and never get too low on yourself where you're at a zero. You always want to maintain that seven, like yeah. that median level at a seven yeah. of excitement. So, like, after doing these ice baths and stuff, I'm just mentally, like, I'm just cleansed, I guess is the word I want to say. Yeah. And, uh, no, I get that. It's cool, man. Like, literally, for me, just po- I, for me, just posting on my Instagram, man, like, the amount of people that have been, like, just doing it themselves. Like, I got tagged on Snapchat the other day. It was this kid named, shout out Antonio. I don't know your last name, but shout out Antonio. And he literally just tagged me. He's like, shout out Zach Kornfeld for inspiring me. And he he hopped in like a little cold pot. Mm. And I was like, hey, yo. So it's like, nah, it's the little things in life that really get me going, man. Yeah. And, uh, and, and my dopamine is up big time. Yeah. Like, uh, I've always been a cold shower guy at yeah. least the past two years. Uh, not in high school. I didn't, I didn't I didn't take care of myself in high school. I only wrestled and that was it. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, so like for all the viewers in high school, if you're like not doing this shit, it's totally okay. Because I didn't start doing it until like literally like. A year ago yeah. so most I, of us are fuck offs in high school yeah i mean we all are. i mean the best kids come out the best like i said the kids with chips on their shoulders always do uh-huh. the best it's just when you wake up and you realize that okay i have to grab the world by the balls now yeah. and you know i can't be a, i can't have victim mentality i can't have any of that stuff you just have to fully just like i think it's a switch and like i don't know it was a switch for me mm. i don't know how to describe it but when uh, did you start adopting these principles like were you I mean, quote unquote, a fuck back in the day, like when you were in school, like yeah. did, where did you see your life going when you were younger? I always knew I was meant for greatness. Yeah. I just didn't know when or how mm, it'd come. Right. Um, and like, I always have this little saying, it's like, I'm the main character of my, yeah. of my movie, movie being the world. Mm-hmm. So like, I always knew I was going to be like, I was always like, like charismatic and stuff. So like, even though I'd get in trouble, I always mm. talked my way out of it. Yeah. And like the teachers always loved me still. Yeah. Um, I would just like, uh, seek that attention to like, just do something stupid, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, but like, I, w- I wouldn't say I was a fuck. I mean, my grades weren't the best. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're at prep where you have like a lot of just like people where it's like their goal in life is to go to college. And here, yeah. I, I'll never forget it, man. When I walked in, it was junior year of high school. I, w- I came late to school. I don't know what I was doing, but everyone's freaking out. I'm like, why is everyone freaking out? What's going on? And they're like, common app. I'm like, what the fuck's a common app, right? Like, what the hell is that? And for all the people that don't know what a common app is, it's like a way to help you like, uh, submit applications yeah. for colleges like and mass stuff like. supply yeah exactly yeah. yeah mass supply common app whatever and i'll never forget i'm sitting there and i'm like thinking to myself like am i gonna go to college and i i went home that day i told my parents i was like yeah, i don't think i'm gonna go to college yeah. they were surprisingly very cool with it they're like hey if you don't want to go great but after high school you're on your own did uh, your parents go to college yeah my dad went to Pitt, and then my mom went to queens mm. like, my mom's from manhattan my dad's from uh here yeah. Um, but it, they, like my dad's entrepreneur mindset, you yeah. know? so like he, he always, he always, my dad's very like, let them be independent. Like mm-hmm. he was like by no means a helicopter parent. Like my mm-hmm. dad, like he didn't have a childhood growing up cause he was always working. So yeah. my dad would let me, you know, go out on the weekends. Like I, you know, like you have those parents that call you all the time and like, yeah. where are you? Come home right now. Yeah. I never had that. It yeah. was just like pure, like independence. Mm. And, uh, Same. It, it was great. It, that, that was the best thing that ever happened to mm-hmm. me. Uh, just because uh, you see all these kids now, and there's nothing wrong with it. So I, that's the last thing I want to stress. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. But you have a lot of kids that never, let's just say, 
went out or like drank or whatever the situation is in high school and then the second they go to college they just like they, yeah they unleash they unleash man and then they just become like they just go downhill yeah. you know and th there's only like a few people like that but like i don't care i mean that's still someone out there that's like that's fucking up so it's like thank god for my parents for being or just letting me be me um but yeah, I so guess important. I was a little fuck up. I guess you could say that. Yeah, yeah I that always, was just for lack of a better term. That's like kind of how I like to describe my earlier years because I I made it three six or one eighty. I completely turned around. Yeah, I was a fuck when I was younger, so that's why I use that term. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean nothing wrong with it too. It's just that when you like wake up and realize like okay yes. like now is like it's the real world like. Like I said, after doing that junk removal thing, like I realized that the real world is not all like sunshine rainbows yes. and like, yep. daisies and stuff. I realized it's actually a fucking cruel place out there. Mm -hmm. Like it's really scary and dangerous. So it's like either you let the world become your bitch or you make the world become your bitch. And yeah. I just made that decision. I was like, all right, it's time to. Yeah. yeah. That rent to do every day, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, man. It's yeah. not like, oh, I do something hard and then I'm the man now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, motherfucker, no. you got to do it every day. Every single... See, everything is like, obviously, like, look, like you have kids that, like... Like, I, I know this one kid, I'm not going to say his name or anything, but, like, he did an ice bath, right? It's posted on social media, and, like, everyone's, like, hitting... Everyone's like, no, oh, you're right. It's, but he only did it once just to post it. Yeah. That's the shit that pisses me off the most. Like, want to be, like wannabes or like like just frauds i guess part-time savages part-time part -time savages. Savages. that's a good way of putting that's it. a good line yeah. i'll knuckle that i'll yeah. knuckle that that's a good one savage. yeah yeah it's like no nah, like you're savage 24 7 yeah and like you have to and like yeah does my inner bitch sometimes like win over me yeah yeah but like 90 percent of the time i make them i make it my bitch so yeah it's just about like waking up and you know realizing we gotta get this fucking cold plunge. I know. Got me fired up. Yeah, you guys are more than welcome to do it. I'm making tonight. Yeah, you literally right after this, we can, we can go over. And we gotta take a video. <laughs> yeah, let's and do post it. that shit on the gram, right? Or not, not the gram on this podcast on the intro. Oh yeah, like yeah. But, all right. Yeah, <clears throat> same us. Let's do it. Yeah, but fuck yeah. I think you asked me like when I started like adapting all these. Yeah. Like uh, I guess like, philosophies. Like when did I am philo I just like I, habits. Good yeah. habits. Yeah. 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 I would just say it start working at the grip because every day you have these guys like if you th like I just keep up with the guys at the yeah. grip. like you got guys that are doing s like seventy five hard you got guys that are yeah. like, they're, they're doing like eight workouts a day like they're doing they're like doing marathons like every mm -hmm. other week like we have the saying at the grit like do hard shit now so life just becomes easier yeah so it's like I'm just like in that group of guys that are like just like dialed you know and. I see all these guys doing like cold plunge. I see all these guys running marathons like all the time. I see these guys waking up at five in the morning, mm. four thirty for some people. I see these guys like just just hustling, grinding. They have like side business. Like the guy that got me into this, not Claudio, but the guy above Claudio mm. who got Claudio in this. His name's Dylan Hafen. Shout out D Hafe. Uh, he has three businesses. He has like a, a twelve million dollar downline at the grit. So he's already making a good chunk of change off of that. He has a um, a landscaping business during the summer. Yeah. So that's awesome. And then the coolest thing is he also has a uh, a rare French breeding or French bulldog breeding like dog mm. business. And he literally sells puppies for twenty thousand dollars. Holy each. fuck. Like each, each. <laughs> and he has like six just in his house right now that oh are like God. that he's ready to ship off. So that man's about to make a quick bag. But yeah. like I'm just one of like these multiple guys that are just like ambitious mm. and hungry. Mm. So once you surround yourself by all that, it just becomes normal to do what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, you can't just, be the motherfucker that's not doing it. Yeah, exactly. And like you just a bump. Like last year, man, like all I was doing was traveling. I wasn't really like working out or whatever. Like mm. even though like I love traveling, I had a great time. It's just that like I would open my phone and I not not to compare others, but like I would open my phone and I would see like. Like here I am. I woke up in Miami. You know, at, like, yeah. I went to bed at like four a.m. and this motherfucker woke life. up at five to run a marathon, mm -hmm. and I woke up when he was done with the marathon. And I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, I got to get it in, man. I got to switch it up. I got to yeah. do something. So, um, even though I had like the greatest like nine months last year, it was just like a free for all, doing whatever I want, whenever I want. It's just this year I learned more discipline and like, uh, just to you know create my own destiny and my own fate. And you know, like today I'll do what others mm. won't. So tomorrow I could do others can't. It's like my Heck yeah. My so today goal. is January, what, 15th? Yeah. Something like that. Yep, 15th. So <laughs> what are your 2023 goals? Like, what's your plans? What do you want to accomplish so I hate the term, like, 2023. I don't know. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, or maybe that's, like, 
Yeah, like a little cliche. I don't not I, like. I don't mean. Uh, what's the word? I know. What you, I know. What you're not saying. like. Not no New Year's resolution there, bullshit. Okay. That's there, what right, I think yeah, you mean, bad. and I'm the That's same my way. Fault. I, I, my fault. But um, in, in terms of like what you like, what do you see yourself doing this year? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm doing a Golden Door. Like I have to. Like it's a fact. That, what's that? That's yeah, 650k what's in total revenue. That's, that's about like 400 dollars take home or 400 thousand dollars take Whew. home. Half a milk. Half a ticket. God. And then my team, I want to do like five million dollars in revenue. So we're gonna do that. Yeah. That's like my main goal right now. Fest? Yeah, no, it's gonna happen. Mm. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that it's yeah. not gonna happen. So we're just gonna do that. Um, besides, like work, uh, make sure that my relationship with yeah. my girlfriend's healthy. You know, make yeah. sure she's happy. Same with my relationship with my family. You know, make sure that we're on good terms and you know yeah. everything's going well. Um, and then also just change kids' lives, man. I have a lot of kids that are you know looking up to me this summer to be a great leader. And you know, I really the same way how Claudio Sabahano. Shout out my boy. Changed my life. I want to be that guy for mm. some kids. And I know it. We have some kids right now. We have a kid named Cole Ferranti. He's a Pittston kid. He moved out to Utah. He's like 18 years old. And he's going to change his life. We have Cosmic Dan. That kid's going to change his life. Cosmic Dan? Yeah, I call him Cosmic Dan. It's a bad name, yeah, son. It's, it's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we got, uh, I don't know Jimmy's last name, but Jimmy's going to change. Like, we, I literally, like, like, I have, like, I'll even show you right here. These are, like, the... The 50 kids that are coming out this summer that are all rookies alone and like at least 10 of these kids are like they're just some dogs you yeah know i mean and like i said we we had like strict like you know interviews mm. this summer to come out so it's not like we're accepting some no random bum mm -hmm. off the street you know? so what are you looking for in these people like when you're doing these interviews and you're talking to these people what are you looking for i'm just looking for people that are motivated and just want to succeed and are ambitious mm. you know that's like like i had this one kid that said like dude it's just that I, I don't even enjoy going out anymore. It's like, yeah. I, I, like why? I'm going to like poison myself drinking out so I wake up and I have to two days to recover. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm just looking for people that just want to succeed, man, that just want... All right, so this is how I describe the job. It's not even a job. It's three months out of the year, okay? And here's what you get out of knocking, okay? You get three things out of it, okay? Obviously, you get the money. Money's great, but, like, I bought this water bottle. It was, like, $3, okay? So the money's gone. So money comes and goes. So money's sure, not yeah. important. But the two things that you're going to get out of this job for working at Grit Marketing is two things. You get the skill set of sales. That's with you to the day you die. Greatest like, skill to have. Without a doubt. It is greatest the greatest skill, skill especially door to door. You know what it's like knocking on a random person's door and then 10 minutes later holding their like Visa Master credit card in their hand? It's a fucking phenomenal feeling, you know? That's by far one of them. Yeah. But you have a skill set. Once you hone that skill set, that's with you to the day you die, man. And we're only 20. It's like riding a bike. Just like riding a bike, man. Yeah. You switch it to, or drive a car, whatever the situation yeah. is, you know? So I would say the skill set is definitely, you know, one of the most important parts of it. But by far the the other most important one is the networking, man. Like yeah. you're literally surrounded by 18 through 30 year olds, man, that make making more money than you'd ever thought imaginable at such a young age, man. Yeah. Like it's literally like you're this kid, like I know his name, Marco Martinez. Shout out my boy Marco. He's from Atlanta. He did 278k in revenue. Mm. That motherfucker is 19 years old, man, and he made. I'm pretty sure if my numbers, he made like 96 grand this summer, bro. <laughs> That's just one of the many successful stories that have yeah. happened in this, you know. And like, listen, not everybody does well in it. I mean, not everybody. Um, it's hard work, but. The people that are actually serious about it and that are bought in and that have a good why and that really just want to succeed and take over the world are the ones that do the best. I, the way I describe it, it's not a job. It's just a three-month opportunity to propel you to the next point in your life. Mm. That's how I describe it. It's like an it. operation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, we have the tools. Like, I did it. Dylan's done it. Tate's done it. Chris, or, I want you guys to meet Chris Urbanski. He's from the area. He made yeah. 100 grand this past summer. Wow. Fuck yeah. Let's yeah. Go. And he's actually a year younger than me. So yeah. shout out Chris. I worked out. I, he's my workout Urbanski. Buddy. I feel like I know that name. He actually, he started off as Chris Don't Care. He was actually like Chris a, don't care. he had like a Nelk, like kind of like the Nelk Boy channel uh, kind of thing. So he's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. he had his own thing called Chris Don't Care. And he actually had a couple of videos that went like viral. Mm. So the story with him and like, you guys should actually have him on. Great mother. Like, just a, just like me, just yeah. a dialed mother get, motherfucker. Mother getter. And yeah, mother getter. Yeah. <laughs> Go getter, whatever the hell it is. But he basically, the way he got recruited was he was doing like his videos and stuff. Yeah. Claudio calls him and he's like, yo, um, just work for four months, man. And you could take this money and invest it into your videos. Because he was already living out of his car or something. So Damn. like he took that money, he made a couple of videos. But, you know, now he's just 100% into the grip because I'm. He's, first year he made like 50 grand. Yeah. Second year he made 100 grand. And this year his goal is like... 
at least 300, something like mm. that. So uh, mm. just great people. But like I said, no, not everybody succeeds in this job because, like I said, everybody wants to be a hustler until they, you know, get a taste of what it's like. Fuck you know, yeah. those long hours, you know, like the the mental side mm. of things, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, ultimately, it just comes down, in, like, to your work ethic at the end of the day. That's th- Those are the type mm. of people that we're looking for. It surprises me how, like, young the motherfuckers are that you guys are working with that have this type of work, e- like, the work ethic that you're talking about. That's, yeah. like, the most surprising part to me is how young you guys are. Some of the kids that do the best, too, are the kids that didn't go to school, and they've been working, like, construction jobs for, like, two years. Mm-hmm. Really? And, and, like, they realize, like I said, they realize what the real world's like. Yeah. And then, like, this is, like, a cheat code to life. So, like, on the East Coast, it's, like, knock, door knocking is, like, not a thing. Mm. Like, no one knows about it, but that's, like, my job is to, like, let everybody know about it. Yeah. So, um, but, like, in Utah and California and Arizona, everybody's, like, there's, like, they're all knocking. Like, yeah. Everybody's doing that. Um. So, like, there's kids out there that are succeeding. Like, we had this guy. He's the number one guy in our company. His name's Drew Hansen. He, all right, just to put it in perspective to you, I did $3 million or three, $300,000 in revenue personally. Drew Hansen, only three years older than me. He's actually a little shorter than me, too. I'm a short guy. I'm, like, 5'6". Five, He's, like, 5'5". Five, five. He did $1.3 million oh in personal God. revenue. That's 70% take home right oh there. Oh, my God. And then he also has a $20 million downline. So it, it just oh goes to show. God. What's a downline? It's like basically your team, like your overall. Oh, like, okay. Uh, so like my all my guys in Long Island, like as a whole group together, they did like $1.6 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously we get a piece of that because, yeah. you know, we're the ones training them. We're the mm-hmm. ones – we're managing them basically. Mm-hmm. So if you – if they make money, you make money. If they don't make money, you don't make money. So it's my goal and like – my determination and everything in life is to turn these guys into beasts. Not only for me, but for them. Because if they win, I win. If I win, they win. And that's just, like, the mentality that we give. You know, everybody eats. You know what I'm saying? Everybody eats. Mm-hmm. And the thing about, like, grit, too, is everybody wants to make money with their... You know, when you're growing up, everyone wants to make money with yes. their friends. No one does it. Like, no one ever actually makes money with their friends. You know what I'm saying? But this, you make fucking money with your friends. And it's, like, a fucking, like, fact. Mm-hmm. Like, I... It's just a fact, bro. Um, I mean, we just signed with the Utah Jazz, like not too yeah, long. Yeah, how's that? We, yeah, we wanted to talk about that. It's pretty cool. I mean, I guess Ben Egan and John Taylor, Garth Massey, and Josh Nielsen just made a deal with them or whatever. So basically, we get um, court seats. I'm pretty sure like three times a month, and then we all we get like, unlimited box seats for all like little, not just for like jazz games and stuff, but we also get for like like Post Malone was just there. It's mm. called Vivid Arena, so we also have like a deal with Vivid. Um, actually, they're just switching into Delta Arena. I just saw that today, but. Um, like people were in the box seats for like Post Malone and stuff like that. Wow, but that's it's all money, you know. Cool. They probably just gave them a big amount of money mm-hmm. just so they can, you know, put their banner in the building yeah. and stuff, and they could say that they're partnered with the Grit or the Grit's partnered with them. Like mm. that's all money. They probably just gave them a big chunk of change mm-hmm. to say that. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, like the reason why I'm heavy with like pushing people on is because like I was like I was never like this. Like never like the mindset I have now. I was, yeah. you know, and it just changed my life and. I always say this, if I can do it, why can't you? You know? And that, whether it's knocking or not, like, if I could succeed, why can't you succeed? Absolutely. If I could succeed, why can't you succeed? You know? And that just goes for everything in life, not just knocking. But I personally, they say two years, or one summer of knocking doors is equivalent to two years of business, like mm. co- like business school. Mm. And, and like what you're saying, kind of like circling back to experience. That's mm. how you learn the most out of everything It's just by putting your foot in the door. Because you're actually fucking doing it. Yeah, and it's not like putting one foot in, one foot out. Like, you got to, like, put both feet in, plant mm-hmm. that shit. Jump in the tub, bro. Yeah, man, jump in that ice plunge. Yeah. <laughs> just, it just get it done, ultimately. But, uh, yeah, it call it, we call it a school of hard knocks. So you, school of hard knocks. <laughs> Literally knocking on the doors. That's kind of... Yeah, yeah, Do you know how long you, you think you'd want to be doing something like that for? Yeah, man, I mean, I'm only 21. You know, Gary Vee always says your life doesn't start till you're 35. So it's like, and that's a fact. I yeah. mean, like, we're so young. Like, yeah, fuck it's a crazy. lot of a lot of people are always like kind of like like especially maybe it's because social media they're seeing like all these TikTokers and Instagram influencers just making a lot of money now, but it's like yeah. that's like one in a million. Like that's the thing people don't understand. That's like social media is a highlight reel. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you're like a, I'm pretty sure like like the suicide rate now is like fucking insane for young teenagers. It's higher now. than it's ever been. Yeah, because of social media, obviously. But like, you just gotta understand, man. Like. Uh, I just wanna, I just wanna inspire people, and like I just wanna change people's lives the same way Claudio changed my life. And uh, I always say this: the day I stop, like my door-to-door experience, is when my pa- like my side hustles make more than my you know uh, main source of income. So I just bought my first. Uh, I went half on it. I bought my first uh, investment property. Uh, it's a six-unit apartment complex. Um, 
It was like 150k each. Uh, we paid in cash, so we don't have <laughs> we don't have any. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, mortgage. No mortgage. We don't have any interest rates from the bank or anything. So, but the, you know, what we are doing is we're um, we're gonna take like fifty thousand dollars from the bank, and we're just gonna renovate each apartment complex from there. So yeah. um, there will be like a little bit of a, a little interest rate being paid, but literally we did the math on it, like just to like give you an idea. Um, Who'd you go half on it with? My boy Danny, he owns a, a nail salon, and uh, actually it's right behind there. It's called My Nails. Check it out. Shout out. Best place to go. So right behind there, there's six units, and we're going to renovate them. So we're going to probably just um, – what we want to do is we want to make it very, like, kind of like a luxury apartment complex mm. because, like, we took a look – or, like, my – kind of like my nanny growing up, sadly, her house caved in, like, due to, like, bad – like, a leak or whatever. Sure. Right? Like, and she was looking around for, like, uh, apartment complexes, and they were all, like, disgusting. Yeah. Especially in this area. Yes. Like, disgusting. So she went into Danny's other apartment. Like, he has, like, multiple apartment complexes mm-hmm. and stuff. He, he The reason why I got in on it is he just sees my ambition. Mm-hmm. He just sees my hustle in me, I guess. So he gave me an opportunity to work with him. Uh, so shout out, Danny. But um, when Joanne walked into his one of his other apartment complexes, he started cry- like, she started crying just because of how beautiful it was. Yeah. So... Our goal is to just uh, kind of make it really high end, and in, no rent's not going to be like eight hundred, nine hundred. Like our rent's going to be like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. Yes, yeah. sir. If I get making three, that money work for you, yeah, man. If I get like three of those, that's like thirty eight hundred a month, and then if you multiply Passive. that by twelve, that's like forty five around there, like a year, and then that's just yearly. Man, that's as beautiful. Year. So to answer your question, I'm probably going to leave door to door once my side hustles make more mm. than my uh, my main source of income. Mm-hmm. Uh, that answers your question. Yeah, there you cool, go, man. Then you get to make your own clothing brand. Yeah, and, and then I get to be a DJ. I'm a big raver. Like my people ask me, like, what do you like to do for fun? Like I rave. Like I go to uh, a lot of like just for all those who don't know what raves are. Like I haven't gone to like a rap concert in the past two years because they just suck. Um, so I go to like EDM festivals now. Yeah. Um, and those are by far like that's like my therapy, I guess you could say. Mm. That's like where I let go and like have some fun. Yeah. Um, so I've been to like. Ultra Miami, EDC Las Vegas, Lost Lands, Moonrise, Illfest, um, uh, Hijinks. Um, I plan on we're going going to um, uh, Thunderdome in Seattle. I think in two weeks, um, and then I'm going back to Ultra Miami be right before the summer starts, and then wow. it's gr- and then it's that's real grind time. You want to be the DJ though? That's what oh, you yeah, mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I I always wanted to be like the manager and stuff, yeah. but like, I, dude, like the feeling I get when I'm just at these festivals and these raves, it's just so be- unbelievable. It's like the same way from door to door, I could change some kids' lives. Like same thing being on that stage, just watching everybody be so happy. Yeah. And like just the euphoria in the room is just beautiful. You're creating a moment for people. Yeah. And like, I would love to do that like every night for mm. someone. And I have the energy to do it. Like, and it's not that I want to be, f- I'd probably like wear a mask. Cause mm. like, I don't, I don't want to be famous. Like on some fucking, what is that guy called? Which uh, one? Marshmallow? marshmallow, yeah, yeah marshmallow. marshmallow dead mouse. There's a AT aliens. There's yeah. a whole bunch of group of those guys that wear masks. But uh, it's like I want to pull like the Hannah Montana thing, you know? Like no one really knows who I am. But yeah. like, it's not like I never. I don't want to chase fame. I don't want to chase money. I just want to chase my dreams and do what I really want in this world. Ultimately, it what makes me happy. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I want to be a famous D. Or I say. I just contradicted <laughs> that, but I want to be a big wha- time. I want to be a big, big time, time big DJ, time DJ uh, and just uh, give people a great moment. You know, people are spending their money to come see you. I want to show them a good time. Yeah, and, man. Uh, just make them feel happy. Wow, man. That's I mean, that's an interesting part about. I think you'll agree. A lot of the people we've been having on recently is finding out like the deeper passion within like what you're doing. Deeper reason, yeah, yeah, why they do what they do. Yeah, that's very interesting to me. Yeah, a lot of people have businesses, but they don't enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're like depressed, and mm. they they're in that stuck position now. Yeah. So it's like before you ever they like, fully execute on something, just make sure like you you really want to do it. Don't do it because your mom or your dad told you to do it. Facts. Don't tell it because your girlfriend told you to do Facts. it because you want to do it. Because Facts. ultimately, it's your world, not their world. So take control before you let someone else hijack that shit. So fuck yeah, yeah. If that makes sense, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. What about you guys? What do you what do you, what are your big goals? What I gotta take choose? a wicked piss. So let me go piss real quick I'll and take, I'll take a right. wicked piss. Well, let's hear, Kevin. What are we feeling? I guess. I mean, uh, to really describe everything I want, I think would be too hard. But I guess right now in life, what I'm building towards is obviously similar to like what got you started and everything you're doing. I I've always wanted to, I guess, be like the master of my own destiny in a way I wanted to be financially free. And like I was describing to you earlier, I come from 
being a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> so true. embrace that shit. Yes, absolutely. So at a time in my life, I mean, and even up until recently, I would say until like four, maybe yeah, maybe five, four, three years ago, like I really didn't know what direction I was I was going in. I was kind of lost. What year did you graduate? Did you graduate I was nineteen. The same? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're a year before me. I graduated in twenty twenty. So what school? Myers High School. Oh, cool, cool. So right down the street. That oh, was wow. like the year when. COVID happened. So I didn't even have a full senior year. At this point, I had no plans for college. And I ended up going to college for a semester just to not feel like I was being a fuck, if that makes sense. Like to just do something. So I wasn't just throwing my life away. Big mistake. I always had a passion for, I guess, being a creative and expression and kind of, I guess, just getting what I wanted. What's the best way of putting it? Just, I guess, really just doing what I wanted to do. So I found an idea, and I'm, I was very similar to you in the sense I listened to Joe Rogan, like, every day. All day. So Daily. And there was podcasts I was listening to before that, and I've always been big into YouTube. I love, like, the feeling, kind of similar to what you were talking about, like, DJing. I always loved the feeling I would get from, like, when the end of my day was over, I get to, like, watch my favorite creator do some shit that I really thought was cool. So... I wanted to be able to, I guess, replicate that feeling for other people. And like my new motto now is just telling people it is possible. Like it's possible to pretty much pick up a camera, pick up a mic, do what you want to do. So that's kind of my goal now, similar to what you were also saying before, just showing people that it's possible to chase your goal and do what the fuck you want to do in life. But while also blowing this up, like this is my my baby. This is my passion project right yeah. now. So and it's beautiful, man. Cause like, you know how many motherfuckers I've met that said, let's start a, po- let's do a, po- I would do a podcast. Mm. Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen one fucking clip or video yeah. or anything. So the fact that, what are you guys, 37th episode? What are you guys doing? Uh, this, your will episode be, will be 39. Yeah. You guys are on, you did 39 of these, bro. I don't, yeah. everybody says, let's do it. Yeah. Same thing to my, what my phone says, man. Execution is everything. Mm. People always have ideas, but never pull the trigger. Just shut the fuck up, put your mm-hmm. head down, and make it happen. Mm-hmm. You guys made it happen. And it's funny because, like, with some things, I've had that mentality in the past where, like, I've had ideas or I've had things that I wanted to do but necessarily didn't fully carry it out. From day one, getting the idea that I wanted to do this, I found a way to make it happen from day one. Yeah. Like, I never, like, this was never something I just thought about doing and then never did anything with it. Like, from day one, it was plugging, like, little shitty five below USB microphones into a fucking literally this laptop that i started on like that shit right there and mm-hmm. just doing it and just talking to people and smoking cigars and bullshit and laughing and having fun because realistically doing this th- i mean everything behind the scenes sure and everything now business wise that's hard that's difficult but just sitting down talking to cool people like yourself and having conversations and learning things and coming to new revelations in life and really just all the knowledge and information i get to take in now that makes it all worth it this is easy just talking is easy yeah but a lot of behind the scenes yeah the but behind the scenes shit that's tricky but if you really want it you'll figure it the fuck out i'll keep it very transparent you guys i didn't know what to expect coming in here and mm. i will say you guys got a beautiful setup but thank I, you what is this right here a, a roadcaster pro yeah roadcaster pro like, i don't know anyone else that has a roadcaster pro yeah. so y'all are doing something when know? i bought that thing i bought it for i think 450 and seriously like at the time i think i had fucking 500 something dollars to my name yeah. so i just pulled the trigger i bought it and like, you got to think like everything, like the mics, like shit's not cheap. And like when I, when I was buying that, bro, I didn't know what the fuck to expect. I just knew I wanted to do it. So I fucking bought the fucking equipment and we just started sitting. He was my first guest. Like yeah. that's how this happened. <laughs> <Nice>. So like <laughs> we sat down, we were talking, we were bullshitting. And honestly, he was the one that lit the fire under my ass. Cause kind of how before I was just saying like from day one, like I was going to be doing this. That's not fully true because I hit like a weird roadblock very early on where I was having, like, a confidence issue. Like, I was kind of worried about just putting the content out there, just doing it. We were recording forever, but we were never really posting them. And then one day he was like, yo, bro, let's just fucking go upstairs, record it, and post it. Fuck what happened. So Fuck we did yeah. that. Shout out that. We posted it, and then our goal was from that day on, we were going to post an episode every single week. And we did that. So People always think there's, like, a perfect time to, like, do something. No perfect time. There's no perfect no. time. It's no. just, you just got to do it. You know? mm-hmm. That's what it was for me. Like that, that's a perfect way of putting it. Cause at the time, like I wanted, I'm a perfectionist. Like I wanted everything. I wanted the perfect quality. I wanted the perfect camera. I wanted the yeah. perfect lighting. I wanted the perfect audio. Like I wanted all that. There's no such thing. No <laughs> such thing. And I didn't have the money for it. It was unrealistic. So I kind of just, at that point, you kind of just really got to take what you can afford to do, what you can do and just start there and then build it. Just keep building snowball effect. Over time, innovate, it'll happen. Innovate, innovate, innovate. 
So that's kind of where we are now. We're at a point where we're still using a lot of that same equipment that we bought early on, but now we're making business moves. Or We literally we, just caught, bro, it's funny how it happened. Right <laughs> yeah. before you came here, yeah. a friend of mine put a MacBook on his story, and I was like, yo, how much? Told me the number, I'm like, and he just dropped it off dropped it right off. before you came here. Hey, really? I just got the new MacBook, so, MacBook, yeah. Hey, just execute, man. Just happens like that, for sure. I love that, man. Yeah, I mean, thank you for sharing that. That's, Absolutely. It's really cool, because like, I, I was in like a, a similar position, too, to that, yeah. so it's cool to see, like... uh how you just uh, ashy to classy? Shout yeah. out Biggie. <laughs> well, for me, it changes all the time. Like what I really want to do, not in terms of like what I want to do in life, but where I really want to take things, like where, where I want my life to be in the future. That changes for me all the time. But I do this like for infinite reasons. But initially, like I said, it was really just for a place of expression. And now, like for what it is now, it's I never expected this. And you're like, just getting started too. Fuck yeah. I'm like, like, I'm the, like, we'll say first because... You, Guys are only on thirty nine, you know. Yeah. You guys are gonna have a million at one point, so it's this is just the beginning, you know. Yeah. This is the we call it a ramp. This mm. is just the ramp. You haven't mm-hmm. even touched the ramp yet. There's a way. There's a mm. lot more room to mm-hmm. go. But uh, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. What about you? What's here? What's are we talking about? Goals. What's here? Yeah. What, what's like? Uh, where <sighs> do you where do you see yourself thirty years, kind of? So I got a lot of things I want to do, man. I want to. I have a. I have a legacy mindset. Like I want to. I want to build a life. That is a cool it will be a cool story one day cool you know like i want the story of my life to be stapled yeah. i want i want to make a dent in some way you know i really like when um steve jobs so i got that poster right there steve jobs says i want to put a ding in the universe hey you know i really look up to like guys who are able to to really pound their name in sand like the alexanders and and steve jobs and elon musk like i think those guys are really cool and uh, I don't know exactly how I'll do that yet. I know some things that I want to accomplish. Like, I know I want to run this podcast up to at least 20 million subs. Yeah. Yeah, at least 20 million subscribers. Make it happen. Nothing's yeah. stopping you. Yeah. Um, Consistency is everything. I like to read a lot. So I want to write a best-selling book. New York Times bestseller. What are some top three books you got? I'm a, I'm a little bit of a reader, too. Not like as, not, not like three? a reader, but like I have a couple books I've read. Top three? It's very hard for me to put that on there, but I'm going to say How to Win Friends and Influence People Changed My Life. Classic. Dale Carnegie, 1936, Whew. changed my life. And it's so like simple, some of the shit that's in that book. You would think it's so simple, but reading it, it's like, damn. And then practicing it, it's like, damn. Yeah. This shit is really how the world works. I do that to it's my mom. Nature. I do it on my mom Yeah, all the time. I hit her with that. I'm like... I, I, Talk in terms of her interests. Like, I'm like, so tell me more about real estate. Yeah. Oh, do you like the client? Yeah. Oh, um, is she nice? Yeah. How do you feel about her? Oh, by the way, mom, I really like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I hit her. I, I hit her with that all yeah. the time. Yeah. But it has to be genuine. Yeah, like, it has to be that's genuine. That's the thing. Yeah. But I, that works in sales too. Like I'm sure you utilize a lot of what Dale Carnegie talks about. Actually, I just read those. it recently, so yeah, I haven't really gotten to a. Pl- I feel like I've been doing that my whole life without even knowing I was doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I felt like I was just kind of like a natural with that. Mm-hmm. So it kind of made when I was reading, I was like, I don't, I feel like I feel like this is already who I am in a way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's a great book though. But maybe when you change into a change into a conscious effort, it kind of it kind of brings you to a new level. Yeah. You know, so I think that one that one really 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 changed my life. Um, I like the Alchemist a lot. Alchemist. I yeah. don't think I've re- I don't think I've heard of that. Paolo one. Paolo Coelho. It's about a young shepherd boy who has dreams of traveling to Egypt and seeing the the uh the pyramids but along the time he learns about alchemy and you know metaphorically what that is like alchemy is turning any base metal into gold but really it's turning any situation any uh circumstance into gold into something beautiful you know what i mean mm. and uh they talk about like omens like ways in which the world communicates with you through numbers through yeah. animals and shit like that so i thought that was a cool book I guess I'll say The Alchemist is number two. And then um, number three, Think and Grow Rich was good, but that's cliche. Yeah. Um, or Rich Dad, Boy Dad. I didn't even read that, yeah. to be honest with you. It's just common sense. Just invest your money and yeah. don't work for people. Have Assets, yeah, liabilities, yeah. common shit. Uh, I don't know, man. You ever read Relentless by Tim Grover? I did, but that one didn't really, I don't know. Like that hey, one. Cleaner, closer. What, yeah. are, what are we? What are we? Um, what's it? Cleaner, closer, and what's the third one? I think it's cooler. Cooler. It's like yeah. cooler. Definitely <laughs> cleaner is the last one, and then I, I think it's closer. Yeah, 
Uh, I, I'm not even a cleaner yet. I, 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 oh, you know, I was about to say Extreme Ownership. I, extreme, Jocko? Yeah, read Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willing. I haven't read that one either. That one's good. That's just like, especially being a manager like and having a bunch of like sales reps with me, it's like, if they fuck up, it's not their fault, it's my fault because I let them get in that situation yeah. to mess up. Or like, small things, you know, like, um, if my... Like, if my buddy didn't go to the gym and, like, I was supposed to keep him accountable, it's my fault. It's not his fault he didn't go to the gym. It's my fault because mm. I was supposed to keep him accountable, you know? Mm. But you didn't like Relentless? Right? Relentless no. is the best. It was cool, but it didn't. It wasn't, like, one of the Never pivotal read. books for me, to be honest. But okay. the third I'm going to have to say is The Art of War. Yeah. Looking back, yeah, The Art of War is it's a different kind of book. Which one's that about? It was written in, like, ancient China. Okay. And it was written by a guy who we don't even know really existed. His name is Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. And he's this ancient, like military strategist and he writes these fundamental principles in warfare but they're they're also applicable to business and relationships and war and it's just the way you can apply it and the way you have to like break it down is very very interesting to me and i think it's a really cool book and it served me well still serves me to this day but so yeah those are my three books goals i want to travel to at least 100 countries make it happen yeah make it happen shut the fuck up make it happen yep I want to live with monks one day. Yeah, I lived in an ashram. You know what that is? No, I don't. I lived in a new. Uh, so I even I didn't mention this part, but I lived in like a nudist colony for a month. A nudist colony? Yeah, I lived with, like they're basically really? monk, basically like just hippies, and that was in Israel, like during mm. the whole COVID, right before the tent thing. Did you let it hang or what? Yeah, I let that shit hang. For real? Fuck yeah! I let What's that, that like, man? Whoa! Hey, we gotta go down this road. Whoa! Wait a minute! <laughs> wait a minute! You <laughs> can't just leave that shit out, bro. Yeah, so it started in India. It's like the whole ashram thing. Yeah, and it's basically just like a. Uh, I don't know, like a, a camp, not really a camp, but it's like a, it's a self-sustaining, but like a society, I guess you could say. So it's like, that's cool, man. Like, yeah, you don't get paid or anything. You just work and you live. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of like gardens and shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like building bunks and yeah. like building, like gardening, whatever it is, watering, you know, yeah. everybody has their own task. It's like called divide and conquering. So everybody focuses on one thing that they're good on and then they just conquer. Mm. So, um, it was optional to wear like clothes. If you ever like, it was optional to be a nudist. How many like, people there were wearing clothes? Like ninety eight percent of them. Oh, yeah. okay. were wearing clothes or weren't weren't oh, weren't, 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 weren't Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I loved it. It was awesome. <laughs> like it did, I just felt so free. What was know? the deciding factor here? Like, what made you think like, fuck it, I'm gonna go to this nudist colony? I my flight was canceled to go home because of COVID. I got kicked out of the hostel because they couldn't afford me. So I was like, all right. I got to do something, and this was for free. Oh, so. and they'll keep you. Yeah, and they'll keep free. me. So yeah. it's self-sustaining. So, like, the world shutting down didn't really affect them. It was, mm. like, a normal day. Um, yeah, that, it was awesome. And then I did the whole tent thing. Because after a month of it, mm. as much as I loved it, I was like, all right. <laughs> if Sorry, my mom baby. finds out about yeah. this. <laughs> That's just the world. Coming, no, from she does. It, coming from a Jewish mother. Now you know, Mom. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Holly. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it was it was really cool. But yeah, the monks, anyways. Yeah, so I want to live. I want to live somewhere in Asia with monks. I really like Asian like philosophies and like the way that they go about their ideologies and stuff like that. Either somewhere in Asia, Tibet, India, somewhere around that area. I like Thailand. To. Are they big with that? Thailand. Well, I want to see Thailand somewhere. You go to do Muay Thai. I like martial arts too. So in some I way, do? yeah, I want to get a black belt in, mar- in uh, Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right now, I'm at blue. And, what level uh, is that? I don't. I'm not. So it goes white, blue, purple, brown, black. Cool. Yeah. So I want to get a black belt in jujitsu and somehow contribute to the martial arts world. I think that'd be dope. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean other little shit that like personal stuff, like I want to own millions of dollars of real estate, you know, shit like that. Yeah, I was uh, stalking the uh, the Instagram, the Go Getters one, and I saw yeah. you had a was it your jujitsu guy on? Or was it someone you had? Yeah. Uh, we had a few. It yeah, was we had a, a few guys on that did jujitsu. We had uh, just recently we had the owner of his gym. That's the one Kyle I was. Yeah. That's the one I saw. NPA yeah. MMA. Yeah, I don't know. It's like same with like Rogan and stuff. They're all into that, and uh, I feel like the whole world is slowly getting into the whole you know martial arts kind of world. You yeah. wrestled, right? Yeah. How long you wrestled? I wasn't that good, but like I wrestled, you know. I just yeah. did it because um, my dad was a wrestler, mm. and I did it just to you know do something in high school, keep me active. Yeah. Um, I just did it freshman through senior year, but what was it? Senior year, I couldn't wrestle because I tore my labrum, mm-hmm. so uh, that that kind of like you know slowed things down. But uh, you know how it is. It's like uh, it's discipline. You know, it's like yeah, it's the hardest thing in the world. Like for wrestling, we have the saying. It's like there's two minute periods. It's total yeah. s- and there's like 
three periods, two minutes each. So it's only six minutes. It's the longest six minutes of your oh, life. Your let life. me tell you. You know, it's like rolling around and doing mm -hmm. something like that. It's like a long time, yeah. especially when someone's trying to like toss you on their back, or let alone in your sport, mm -hmm. choke you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a whole different world. And like different. And you're stuck in this little space. And in that little space, you can't, like, run away. Like, you, you have to stay there and yeah. just, like, combat fight that yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. So, um, yeah, very disciplined sport. The lifestyle of a wrestler is very intense. Very intense. I knew a lot of wrestlers in high school. I used to wear a, a garbage bag and jump rope in a mm -hmm. steam room yeah. at Danko's. Cut weight. Yeah. 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 So it's a different type of lifestyle, man. But I think there's a reason why the world is opening up to the realm of martial arts. And I think it's because of what martial arts is able to bring a person. Like that style of discipline, that lifestyle, the martial way of life, you know, mm. discipline, integrity, honor. But also, I think as a man, it's important to know how to fight. Mm. As a man, it's important to know how to protect the people that you love and to protect yourself and to protect what you care about physically, mm. you know. I think uh, Jordan Peter said something, said something along JP. the lines of, you know, a, a bunny isn't virtuous because a bunny is harmless. Mm. Mm. True, view, t true virtue only comes when you're capable of violence. Mm. You know what I mean? Because then you're able to control it. It's kind of like a, it's better to be a warrior in a garden, garden. than a gardener yep. in a war. Yeah, Bruce Lee. I love that. Just quote. in case you're prepared, you always be prepared. Perfect mm -hmm. preparation prepares you for perfect mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. So if you ever, hopefully, you never have to get in that situation. But if you do get in that situation, hopefully, you're prepared enough for mm -hmm. them. So, <coughs> and it brings about a certain level of confidence as well, knowing what you're capable of and knowing what you know. I think it's it's a cool thing, cool way of life. There's this one saying, I forget what it is. If if you guys know it, or hopefully someone can like DM me after hearing this, but uh, there's like a little saying where um, once you th once you think you mastered something, there's like a whole another like like book on it it's like yeah. i'm trying so it's like after like let's say in, in wrestling terms like after you learn how to do a double leg takedown you think you've learned how to do a double leg takedown but then there's just a whole nother way of doing it and a yeah. whole nother way of like just mastering it i, I forget the saying I, I have to look it up and i can i'll send you like a link to it yeah. but um it's basically saying like it it I think it's like what is it like ten thousand hours to master something. Yep, we and just talked about that. Yeah, mm. and, and people think after like a thousand hours they've mastered it. When in reality, there's a you, you got just nine, you got nine thousand hours to keep going until yeah. you've really mastered that. And uh, I don't know. I think in today's world too, everybody thinks like they have to rush themselves. Yeah, they have to uh, they be, they have to be real quick with it. When in reality, to master something, it takes time. I have ma I have not mastered nothing in my life. Mm. Like I, I always say, I've accomplished nothing yet you know, compared to the real world out mm -hmm. there. Especially after knocking in like Long, Long Island, New York. Like those are some douchebag people. Oh yeah, I can but, I can only imagine. But fuck I, you at my door for? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> nah, it was fuck off my step, you <laughs> cocksucker. That was literally like <laughs> that was it. Like you, you yeah. didn't you didn't miss a beat with that. <laughs> so um and but like the thing is after like working in Long Island, New York, and you see it's like the third richest real estate. In, America, I think San Francisco, yeah. Miami, and then like New York City, Long Island. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. So it's like, yeah, like I, I would like tell them, yeah, I made eighty eight grand. They'd be like, all right, I mean, I make, I make that like a month or a week. So it's like, Different. it really just gives you a whole new perspective on everything. But uh, just like understanding that, like, I don't know, just as a whole, like, even like with jujitsu, it's like, and you, like you haven't mastered it yet. Nope. And you're not close. Not even close. But it's, well, you're gonna get there. Sometimes I think I'm a bad dude, bro, and I'll meet a motherfucker who yep. just shuts that whole idea down. They could be the same belt as you and yep. everything. Like, just because you're a black belt doesn't mean you could you're the best. compete with the top Gordon tier. Ryan yeah, no. Nah, There's always someone here. better. Yeah. Always. And uh, that's, like, that's kind of speaking true to exactly what you're saying. Like, even when you think you're a master, there's still so much further you can push yourself because no, like... You can you can become the best, but you will fall to somebody who wants it more than you at some point. Yeah, and somebody yeah. will figure out that next step. And if you th if let's say in some perfect world you are the master, there's always someone trying to get after yep. you. Yeah. What you got constantly at your throat. And they're always competing. It's like mm -hmm. same thing with MMA. It's like yeah, you may be the double champ, but there's someone out there that really wants to mm -hmm. like take you down. There's a really hungry motherfucker that on wants the way to up. fuck you up and take that spot. So it, which kind of leads to never be content. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Always stay hungry. Um, and yeah, I mean, like in reality, I think, uh, in today's world too, a lot of people just kind of, there's like this little quote and I, f I forget, let's say there's 24 hours in a day times 60. It's like if one hour out of those 20, let's say you have one bad hour out of the 24 hours, right? You're going to let that one hour just like ruin mm. the rest of your day and stuff like that. So 
I, don't know, I just feel like in today's world, man, everybody's like just trying to compare with each other. When in reality, the only person that matters is yourself or your yeah. family. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm going in circles right now with that. But uh, ultimately, man, like there's always someone out there that's just trying to get at you and trying to take that number one spot. And for sure, you just have to keep that mentality and just stay hungry. And never and settle. Never settle. For S- sure. Second you do, you're, you're done. Uh, yep. Would you say like jujitsu after like this is like one of the main things you're focusing on right now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love jujitsu, man. But also I have some goals. Like I want to run a couple marathons this year. I've never run a marathon yeah. before. And so running has been heavy, heavy on my mind too. That's what I'm, that's what Let's I'm go for a run at. Too. Yeah. That's what I'm ass at. And like, for example, the guy, Chris, I was telling you about today, he was like, you want to go on a run? I was like, I just fucking hate running. And like, that's I, the point, though. I know, yeah. I know. That's the point. So that's and then he literally told me, and he 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 literally took my words out of my mouth. He was like, "You're gonna let your inner bitch win," and yeah. I was like, "Ah, he got me." So it's like, you know, if you want to go on a run, bro, I'm more than happy to like. We'll, bro, I'll, we'll I'll hold you to that. Yeah, like I'll, we'll run the dike, whatever it is. Like, I'll I'm here for the it. next couple of weeks, so as yeah. long as I'm in town, like I'm more than happy to like get at it, bro. Man, Let's I'm do it. Happy, like I uh, like the way. The way that life is, you just need someone to make keep you accountable. Yes. I feel like no and doubt, if you bro. have someone just like reminding you. Like I do this thing right now. Shout out my boy Jomo. Joe Monahan. I don't know if y'all know him, but he's a good kid. He was one of my sales reps. You're on point with the nicknames. I love it. Yeah, Jomo. Jomo that's I didn't come up with that nickname, but yeah, <laughs> Jomo Goose. But we do this thing to keep each other accountable. It's basically like how we're saying with social media, everyone's like negative nowadays. Yeah. Like they're just like it's just sad. So this way that we keep each other like motivated and stuff is every day. And we're on like day like four now, so we haven't been doing it for a while, but mm. it's gonna eventually, you know, really take full effect and be great. So every day we text each other three things that we are happy and grateful for from the day before. Mm. So it makes you just, you know, reminisce and yeah. appreciate what you've had. And if there was something negative that happened that day before, you're kind of canceling that out by thinking of three things that are positive. Mm-hmm. So like, just an example for yesterday, I texted him. You can see him. Uh, three things I was happy slash grateful for from yesterday. Uh, seeing my this is like all yesterday. So seeing my friend's band succeed and get a record label last night, hanging out with my good friend Kat, uh, Gavin Thomas, one of my reps. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. And then putting my head under the cold plunge. I have like re- I never really put my head under there. Mm. So being a little bitch. Mm. And then finally yesterday, I just I did it. Got yeah. down there. Close the lid on you too, right? Yeah, that was today. That was today. Yeah. yeah. So now every day I'm putting my head under and stuff. And actually, I don't do that to like be like oh, I'm a badass. It's actually if you put your head under. Like the second you get in there, it just makes it easier throughout the next like really like yeah a minute and a half that you're in there or two minutes whatever it is. So. Oh, we're we're doing it. We going to get another day. Yeah, we good. Yeah, 100%. You got the green light. I literally like have people come over all the time and do it. Like literally from like when I post that, I'll have like kids just swipe them and be like, "Hey, can I come over and try it?" Yeah, like, yeah, get over here, man. Like, more we went to fuck around yeah. and cop a garbage can, bro. No, we I mean we were talking about that for a minute because I, I actually plan on moving in here soon with him. So like yeah. nice. we'll be doing that shit every morning. And uh, well, yeah. So if you're Watching at this point now, you'll probably fucking see a video of us fucking. Well, how big are you? I'm like culprit. five six on a good day, five seven with Tim's. So I'm about six I, foot. Yeah, I mean, how, I'm six one, yeah. like two twenty. So so when you guys get in there, you may feel like the the water like come out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, you'll be able to fit. It's a big one. I got it at Lowe's. Shout out Lowe's. But uh, it like it's just great. It feels so good, man. And I'm trying to get my dad to do it now. And uh, my mom, but big bitch. They're being pussies. They're That's what I kept it. saying to my mom. I kept saying to my mom, like, yo, mom, when you going to come get a cold plunge with me? Not even that I'd be doing a cold plunge with me, but we were talking about it. And uh, she was like, I'm not getting in that cold plunge or whatever. I just thought that shit was pretty My funny. dad's like, I've done enough in my life to do that. I don't need that. He's like, I don't need to prove myself by going in a fucking tub that way. It's like yeah. 36 degrees. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, just do it, man. Just do it once. So. How cold is it in there? You ever put it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Two days ago, so it's cool because, like, like I said, I just put it outside, let Mother Nature, mm-hmm. you know, take over. So sometimes it'll get really icy in there, and sometimes it's just cold water. So when it's normally cold, just like cold water, it's around like 39, 40. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, like today, I think we did it, and it was like 30, like 34. God, man, like 32. I hope you're ready, son. <sighs> I mean, it's I'm literally, ready as I'm a get. I hope so, you're ready. <laughs> I don't know. You guys into meditating or anything? Yeah, or yeah man. So like yeah. I meditate every day at least like 10, mainly just like 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, and like obviously you guys know Winhoff probably. Yes. Uh, so it's like uh, there's a book named Breathe My Friend. Shout out Coop taught me about. And uh, it's basically if you focus on your body when you're in the, the cold plunge, then you're just going to like fuck yourself over. Yeah. But if you focus on your breathing, and if you breathe through your nose, like, hmm. 
it just helps the process like so much better. Yeah. You just focus on your breathing. Like that's everything in life is breathing. Like if I'm ever stressed on the doors and like, mm-hmm. you know, some old lady like just pissed me off. It's like I stay at a seven. I focus on my breathing and I'm like back at it. So same thing that applies for everything. But like for the ice plunge, like I'll teach you guys that when we get in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I had the f- hardest part is the first 20 seconds. And then once you're in there. You're Ooh, brother. I know. Just fo- just focus on the breathing part of it, and then you'll be good. And it's really funny. So you're going to see I have a hot tub right next to it. So I didn't know anything about cold plunging. when I, I just saw Joe Rogan talk about it. I gave my brother my credit card. I was like, go buy, me a, go buy me a garbage can. We put ice in it. And the first day I get in there, I'm like, okay, and then I'm going to jump right in the hot tub right after. Huge motherfucking mistake because if you go from severe cold to severe hot, your body can go in shock. Yeah. So I went Ooh. from like severe cold, literally just. Like, oh, fuck, fuck. Because the first time I didn't know anything about breathing or anything. Like, yeah. I was like, like people were sweating, teaching me about breathing while I was doing it. So I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I get out, I get out, my body's all red. Inside. I jump right in the hot tub and immediately my whole body goes like tingling. Like, and I was like, yeah. oh, oh my God. Shit. I was like, literally, like, I was like, I felt like I was paralyzed for a second mm. and it was just terrible feeling. So, like, um, the last thing you want to do is, like, after you do a cold plunge, is like go take a hot shower yeah. or something. So, what I do now is I just, you know, I. After I take the cold plunge, I like kind of bundle up a little bit, and then I'll just go sit near a fireplace and just start working or like set up meetings and whatever. Cool. But, yeah, I'm telling you, it, the energy you get out of it is like, it's uncomparable, man. It's oh, like, yeah. it's literally like shotgunning six Red, like Red Bulls <laughs> or like drinking like three rains to the dome. Yeah. But no, in reality, you're just jumping in cold water. Yeah. Man. It's crazy how like severe temperatures, hot or cold, because saunas and cold plunge can just like, they have massive like like impact and good habits on yourself so i'm excited for you guys to do it i love like i'm literally in love with the sauna so i'm hoping it's like a similar effect but i'm doubting it where do y'all work out at i work at wilkes-barre area because we work for the school district so Uh, cool what do you guys do for school district Uh, i'm a teacher's aide so like i'm just in there and i help with like students and stuff like that same thing yeah so yeah i literally just got it because of him and it worked better with my schedule i needed to like free up a bunch of time for this so i just had to get a different job from what i was doing prior sundays you do these normally any day. Any day. Yeah. 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 I sacrificed my, my, my football for y'all. So. Oh, yeah. Me oh, too. Really? If it makes yeah, you feel yeah, better. I'm a die hard football. I was literally watching the Bills. Uh, I think the Vikings. I think the Vikings. What do you, who thinks winning? Vikings or uh, or Giants? Vikings, right? definitely. Vikings, Giants game. Did it start yet? Yeah, what time is it? Yeah, I at four or something. Uh, it's halftime. Oh, wow. Giants are winning 17-14. It's big. Who do you, oh, you got your football guy? Eagles. Yeah, like, that's my squad. Like yeah. Are you guys like in the football? Or, like, I'm really not. Yeah, yeah, I, I played it. I love like that was like my first love was football. Yeah, but, but you don't follow football. No, okay, I don't. So you're big. You're a big football. Yeah, guy? I love football. Eagles. I, I watch yeah um, virtually every single Eagles game, and I try to watch all the other games too. Like I just I just found out now that the Bills won their playoff game. Really tight game. Crazy. So what was the score? What was the score? Thirty four to thirty one. It was a crazy. Imagine if shootout. they got Tua playing. I saw that meme. Yeah. I saw that meme, bro, and it was like uh, just like a dead man. And they, yeah. were like, they were just like, get him out there. Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, that's what they expect of him. But like, what's wild about that game specifically though is like when I left my house, like before I even got here, the score was seventeen nothing. Bills. Yeah. Oh, I, so, I was watching half like I was watching the halftime yeah. and it was insane. They had like a an interception and then they I don't, it was like it was a lot. A lot was going on. Yeah. But then last I checked it was twenty seven and then I think at the start of the third, then uh Miami got a touchdown or something and they mm-hmm. were up. But Buffalo won. Yeah. By three. I love so, Josh Allen. Tell you, yeah. I think Josh Allen is like the future of the, the, the league. That that game right there makes it scary though to see what's gonna happen going forward. I'm excited to see. That's like this time of year I love because I love like playoff time. I love when shit starts getting tense and like I, I love the Eagles. That's definitely my team, but I'm at like the point in life now where I'm not like solid on like just repping my team. Like I love other players that play on other yeah. teams. So like I see guy or no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll watch like all the games. I'll watch all of them playoff games. I'm surprised like I didn't get to finish that one obviously because I had to come here and do this. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I mean I, I virtually try to catch every game I can. I love You're watching lucky, football. Bro. You guys may win the Super Bowl this year. My team's not even the playoffs so well, who's your team? I'm a Colts fan. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 Till the day I die, baby. Yeah. Go shoe. But uh, <laughs> it was funny on the way here when I got this water bottle I, I there was an old guy wearing Colts and stuff. Yeah. And being a Colts fan from Pennsylvania, you'd never see other Colts yeah. fans. So, like, we do have a Colt group chat with my some of my buddies. Mm. There's, like, three of us. Shout out Lee and Sean. But, um, basically, I saw this old guy wearing Colts gear. I'm like, go Colts! And he's like, we fucking suck. <laughs> and I was like, we got the fourth pick this year. Yeah. He was like, yeah, but we still suck. And it was uh. just... It was just funny. And I was talking to this old guy in the sauna a couple of days ago about just like the Colts, and he he used to be um a Baltimore Colts fan back when mm, they were in Baltimore yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, no, I think uh, you think uh, if, if from a non-biased opinion, like 
who do you think is going to win like overall? You really think the Eagles got it? Oh, man. I don't know because I don't want to like sell my team short and say that I don't think we do. Like, I mean, obviously. Who do you think is going to be in the Super Bowl? We could like kind of do like another team. So I think like I'll break it down in terms of percentages. Like I think like the best percent chance of the two teams that make the Super Bowl, I think, are the Eagles and the Chiefs. That's like, well, a lot of that is based off bias. If I didn't like either of the two teams, because I, I like a lot of the players on the Chiefs too, so I'm kind of biased towards the Chiefs as well. If I really had to, like, say, based off just all of my knowledge of just, like, how football works, the most complete team in the NFL right now is probably the 49ers. So that's going to be our toughest. Dude, I did, I was watching them last night, and I didn't know who the quarterback was. Yeah. I didn't know. I thought it he was, was, I fucking, thought Garoppolo was playing, but no, this guy's apparently 6-0, and now 7-0. Mm. and And I was, like, watching, like, who is this guy? He was the last pick in the draft. Yep, mystery relevant. First thing I thought about was Brady. So I'm like, yo, never, never doubt. Yeah. Never know. But, uh. I know they they have the best team on paper definitely. Mm. I mean, they that, got Chris me and McCaffrey, my brother were Debo. talking. About, me and my brother were talking about them specifically yesterday. Like if they had a quarterback, like I think it's them. It's them no matter what. Like if you put like a like a like our quarterback Jalen Hurts, you put him on the 49ers, they win the Super Bowl yeah. ten times. Jalen's good. Yeah, Jalen's really. good. We were just talking about that earlier. Like in terms of a lot of the people, we can't wait to get in the pod. Like I would love to have like a, Jordan, like that'd a, be tough. Yeah, like a banger Philadelphia Eagles player. I'm like, if we got Jalen Hurts on the podcast, that'd be insane. Like, yeah, I think about shit like that all the time. Just curious because like I'm into like. Like, all this shit. Like, how do you reach out to people? Like, obviously me, like, you just, like DM yeah. and stuff. But, like, when you get to that level where you want to, like, get, like, big guys, like, big-time players mm. and stuff, like. It's going to have to be through, like. like agent, like, hitting a managers and shit. No, nah, I don't want a manager, to be honest. I'd like to do it all myself, yeah. truthfully. But I think it would be, like, oh, I know Zach. Zach knows Meek. Mm. Let's get let's let's reach out to yeah, Zach. Word see. of mouth kind yeah. of connections and network. Yeah. That's kind of like what we do right now. But for the most part, yeah, like we'll we'll get like a list of people we're really interested in talking to. We'll both sit down. We're like, is this you know? Do we want do we want to do this? Is this per- like what's really cool about this person? We'll talk about these people and then like, do they fit? Yeah, fuck it. Let's reach out to them. We'll yeah. do a pod. That's yeah. like, it's all about fun too. You know, you don't you don't yeah. really like you're not. Is this something I, I learned from, like, where people fail in, like, the creative world? It's, they kind of, or, like, let's say something, just for an example, let's say, like, you make music. Yeah. It's, like, a lot of, same thing at the beginning, like, when you guys started, you were, like, hesitant mm. to put stuff out because you were scared of what others would think, or, like, you were kind of yeah. just, you were trying to, like, satisfy the viewer. Yeah. But in reality, it's, like, nah, just do what you like, yeah. and then if people like it, they'll tune in, and, you know, hopefully it grows from there, mm. so. That's my favorite thing about, well, at least my mindset with this now is, and he and I talk about this often, but, like, never, like, quote-unquote selling our souls. Like, we don't want to compromise for, like, what we think people just want or what we think, like, advertisers will want or what we think, like, the people want. Like, you know what I'm trying to get at. Like, we don't want to sacrifice what we do or how we talk or the things that we discuss or any of that for people that really don't give a fuck about any of this mm. half as much as we do. You know what I mean? I mean? It's really, this is our thing. So if you don't like it, you don't got to watch. If you like it, watch. We love everybody, so. <laughs> May I see this in, like, just full, like, transparency? Like, do you guys, like, want to, like, live here long-term in, like, mm. the area? Or you guys want to, like... I definitely want to get out for yeah. a little while. I want to have roots here. Like, I want to have, like, maybe a property here. yeah. yeah. You know... Reason to come back. You know, yeah. Say what's up to everybody. Yeah, so. and it's, it's definitely, like, Wilkes-Barre brings me back to... Being humble, yeah, you know. Yeah, so I think like maybe this can be a place where my head gets too big. I come and stay here for a little while. Yeah, but I definitely want to get out for a little, like yeah. go go live somewhere else for a while for sure. Yeah, city boys or stick boys? City, definitely. Um, depends. I'm not, I'm not a big city though. Like no. I don't want to live in like Manhattan. Like this is like a perfect honest. size city. Like right. to put what he's saying in perspective because I completely agree with that. Like I definitely I want to travel a whole bunch. Like I'm I moving to like, Texas in two years though. Yeah, Austin. Austin. Austin? Yeah. Two years. Yeah, I Austin. don't know where I don't know where in Texas. Go to Austin. I love Austin. They got like Austin's like the most. It's first of all it's up and coming. Yeah, it's gonna blow everyone from it California is. and Colorado is moving to Austin. Um, it's just modern and it's kind of got that little, you know, mix of blue and red mm-hmm. in there. So yeah. it's like it's like kind of like perfectly. It's like not like you go one place it's all this and if you go the other place it's all that it's like a perfect mix of what you need yeah good nightlife um it's good good people man uh great food um i went there for a music festival i think in i think september and mm. like i i got to explore it a little bit i was only there for like four days but uh check out austin i yeah. hear beautiful things i mean i would live i would live outside of the country too i guess it's just it's all left up to like there's so much territory i have to go explore like, I haven't, like, yeah. seen any of these places yet, so it's very easy to say, like, oh, I'd go live in fucking Italy for a year. Yeah. Like, it's very easy to say that, but I don't really know what that entails. I've never been to Italy, and I've mm-hmm. also never lived right. out of my home state or out of my home country for long periods of time at all. So 
What are your What are your guys' ethnicities? Like, what are you, where are your families from and stuff? Bro, I'm. I don't even know. Seven generation Amer- American. Oh, really? Yeah. Irish, Italian, you know? Yeah. All of it. Oh, uh, everything. Yeah, it's, yeah I'm I got all a little over. shit ton of really? there. Same. I found out recently I got a little bit of Russian in me, I guess, but like d- very uh, Irish. I got fucking. Bunch <laughs> a of European. Lot, yeah. Bunch of European just all yeah, over. Yeah, and yeah. they said, fuck, let's go to this big place that no one's yeah. been to yet. Yep. We're going to call it America. Yeah. <laughs> and they just <laughs> made it call it America. I would like to do the, uh, whatever they call it, with the ancest- the ancestry thing that they do. Where yeah. you fucking like. I'm scared just half that shit's just bullshit. Me I too. That, yeah. Because I think that specific site might be bullshit. Yeah. Ancestry? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Like, technology's dope. And, all, and I'm just talking out of my ass here. I don't know. I never read on it or, any, or anything like that. But, like, how the fuck? Yeah, how? <laughs> From a fucking little DNA in my mouth, are you going to know who my great 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 closest you can get is just like names and places and yeah. then like yeah there's like package deals to it like you can yeah. just use your name and if you use the name it's really inaccurate yeah because there could be a thousand people like say yeah. your name is fucking john john yeah john you know, that's smith. funny i was gonna john say the same smith. thing yes yeah, john smith like yeah. fucking there's about to be ten thousand families with that same name so there's one guy named michael smith that swears he's related to will smith i'm like <laughs> shut the fuck up i'm like smith, yeah smith. Hey. i'm like it's cat or joseph smith whatever his name was that yeah. gotta be one of the most utilized last names in the entire world yeah oh uh, yeah i mean without a doubt but then which kind of like leads back to like the whole like oral tradition thing like uh like that's why, like, I'm a little like skeptical about religion. Yeah. Just because, like, bef- like this, people weren't documenting like writing until like I don't know how many years ago, but it was like in the in the span of the whole universe, it was like not that long ago. So it's like, did my guy really see a, uh, a burning bush, mm. or was my guy just tripping on some shrooms? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that, I, th- I think that's about my those question. Like, all the time. Where, 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 did you see a, a sea splitting, or yeah. you just take too much of those shrooms? And maybe you really think. fucking did see the sea split, but you were fucking, you were, you were definitely seeing some things. You yeah. might have been in a different dimension. Yeah, like, you might have been on. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. psychedelics is a huge part of like our world today, just due to like, uh, you know, religion and, yeah. and all that. I mean. I mean, I, they talk about miracles and stuff, and I know everybody has their own miracles. Like, it's a miracle for me to buy this water. Cause like, True. You know, but, like, you're telling me, like, this guy Abraham took his son Isaac and was about to, like, chop his fucking head off, and then God was like, wait, right before he chopped his head off. Like, uh, like there's, like, a lot of, like, interesting things. But yeah. I think religion was made to cope with death because uh, everybody was feared of death. And then I think it was a way to bring law and order in the place because mm. before religion, I feel like it was a lot of barbaric shit. Yes. Or like uh, just like a, a free for all. Um, people were killing, raping, you know, torturing and stuff. And then mm. someone came in with religion to kind of just like give them the idea that there's an afterlife. So you have to be good in this world. So that way you, there's a chance for you to mm, make it yeah. like into the heaven, you know? Um, That's a good point. I don't think I really thought about it that way. Yeah, I get, in, I get in depth with that stuff. So yeah. maybe it's just There's me. value to it. There's yeah. value to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it keeps the, gr- it keeps the mind thinking. But so I, think, I think it's a part of the human condition, though, to not be able to handle uncertainty. Mm. So we try, to, we try to piece so the So we try to place in. certainty on something that is so uncertain. Where do we go when we die? Mm-hmm. What happens to this person that I love so dearly yeah. after, after they're dead? It is crazy to think with all the technology we have now, no one's ever been able to see what happens after death. You know? Well, from a spiritual perspective, like matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and you are an electrical being. You'd be good with the monks. The monks would like you. Yeah. yeah just well, shave your head first and then, yeah. and then you're good to go. Get yo, I gotta, I got, yo, Matt Sachs. Yeah. Shout out my friend Matt Sachs. He fucking full monk mode right now. He shaved his whole head. Did he yeah. really? Savage. Savage motherfucker. Yeah, Matt's a savage. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. Is he in like the area or did yeah. he go to yeah. like uh, he's doing okay. well he's actually he got an interview uh this upcoming Wednesday to be a software guy in, out in Houston. Oh really? He's yeah, actually he's the guy. Dog. He's actually the guy we're going to Columbia with. Us two and Matt. Oh, so. yeah. Savage, bro. He hit me up the other day. He's like, we do this thing called Savage Saturdays. Oh, what's that? So, he's got me on like running and doing these marathons and shit. So we got like we 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 sat down one day and we came up with like these rud- running regiments mm-hmm. to where we'll be um, adequately trained for when marathon time comes so we wanted to do two marathons and then one spartan race which is 31 miles and it's going to be like obstacles like monkey bars and you have to jump over shit and crawling through it's gonna be fucking wild so 
Savage Saturdays is we'll, we'll get together and run like a double digit or we'll run like seven, eight, nine, ten miles, yeah. something like that. So we got together at 6 a.m. the other day. Heads fully fucking shaved. It's that grit shit right there. <laughs> and that's grit. Uncle Matt. He told me he's on uh, he's on his monk mode shit. Turned all of his notifications off, deleted all of his social media. Nice. And he's just locked <sighs> in. Have you ever taken a break from social media? Yes. I tell me it's not like the greatest like yeah. two months of your life. Like when I did that my first summer knocking, I was just... Mm-hmm. Just felt I don't know. I felt it kind of what my job now. I have to be on like social yeah. media and stuff to like for people who are reaching out to me or vice versa. But when I do take that break from like social media, it just yeah, I don't know, it feels good, man. Yeah. It's just I, I don't know. It's like I caught myself scrolling the other day. You know when you just catch yourself yeah. scrolling, mm-hmm. and I don't have TikTok or anything like that. But uh, I'm talking like Instagram, and I look at my girlfriend. I'm like, dude, I, I just scrolled for like an hour. Like, yeah. Like, so I literally. I, yeah. I literally just went and unfollowed every single influencer I follow. So mm. I followed like ESPN, Bleacher Report, um, I don't know, like not Joe Rogan, but like I unfollowed like Dwayne Wade or like just like yeah. people that like, yeah. it's like why do I like yeah, yeah, I know you're influential and stuff, but why do I really care what you're doing? So I kinda just kept it down to only like look like local businesses or like people who I know who are have their own businesses yeah. and, or and then I just kept my friends or just you know, people that have followed me, I followed them in the years and now I'm scrolling and I see like Maddie Steinberg and I'm like and then and then I see Justin Thomas and then I'm like like these are just random names but I'm just I'm like why the fuck do I care what yeah. you're doing right mm. now yeah so like I'm like I just looked at my screen time I'm at like like mm-hmm. two hours so it's like mm. it's just I don't know I eliminate the bullshit yeah. and stuff and then, yeah I mean I just use snap to keep like in touch with some people and stuff like that I yeah. get addicted to weird things but I I don't I feel I mean until the time I guess I'll say I was out of high school I don't think I really ever had a serious social media addiction my biggest killer is youtube like i was telling you earlier like yeah, you got that you, broke boy youtube we got that good youtube you got the ads <laughs> what do you mean you got the ads Pre- oh you you're talking about premium? Premium? of course I call it's broke boy youtube yeah i got broke boy youtube i i hate the ads man I, they, they've I, never I got me that. with that i've had like a fucking three month free trial of that shit for years nah, it's so awesome though i don't even use spotify how much is it or it's like 15 a month but like but i don't have spotify or um or apple music because dude like Literally with like you, I only have Spotify like for Joe Rogan. Yeah. You know, but like for music and stuff, like on, on YouTube Premium you could listen to a TED talk. You could yeah. look up how to build a shelf. You could look up music. You could watch music videos. And like the cool thing with that with with uh like not Broke Boy YouTube <laughs> is you could just click it, no ads, and then and after you're done clicking it, you can kinda mm. just like scroll down. Yeah. And then do that. That's cool. I don't mind it because I know where it goes though. Like when you're watching an ad, and mind you, like I never watch the ad on YouTube. Five seconds ago, I skip it, but I know where it goes. Like for somebody like us, when we start profiting money off YouTube, all that money is ad revenue. So all the money yeah. that you get from people watching those ads, that's mm. the money that goes to you. So yeah. that's why I, well, for one, don't really mind it. What I was getting at though is that like YouTube is always like my social killer. That was always like, well, my social media killer, I guess you could say, it was oh, like really? the one thing that would like consume most of my time like if you went on my phone in terms of watch time right now it'd be spotify and youtube so these guys up here you were watching all the time yeah the well so when i was younger absolutely and I, I don't really watch full send too much anymore but what i was getting at is like even like at the times when i when i took a social media break i didn't feel like it was really justified in me doing it because i never had a problem with it it was just something i wanted to try i really only use social media for need-based things like podcast promotions and yeah. advertising like if it wasn't for if it wasn't for this, I mean, maybe, I don't know, because I might be a lot more of a fuck if I didn't have this podcast, but the only thing that really takes me on Instagram anymore is seeing how my posts are doing, like mm-hmm. seeing how my my reels, like how much engagement, how many people are sliding up and like saying this, like that's the shit that like gets me on social media nowadays. Have I really you, just never brainlessly scroll. Have you been seeing like a, uh, an increase on the reels? Because I know, yes. some, yeah, I hear reels are like the way to go. Yeah, like, the I shorts hear, like, have been booming. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hear like, the, like people have just been just like, going viral off yeah. of Instagram reels and YouTube reels and stuff like that. Yeah. I, guess, I guess, like, I think the reason why, like, these social medias implemented them is because they saw TikTok and they saw it as a threat. So they were like, we have to, like, put this in our... Mm-hmm. And, like, on TikTok, when it first came out, everybody was going viral. You know, like, mm-hmm. everybody was. So I think what YouTube and Instagram are doing are, like, taking the same, like, formula and they're, like, trying to, like, implement what TikTok does yeah. so they don't get out. Perform. If you look at it for what it is, it's so addicting. Like if you think like specifically it's the reason why we're having this conversation. Like if you think about the amount of people you probably know, 
that's spending upwards of an hour, two, three, four hours a day just scrolling on six second videos on TikTok. It's like, so dangerous. That is insane. And like their formula is insane, man. Like yeah, um, they I know this. you more like, than you know you. My one friend is like a diehard like Trumpy. Okay, mm -hmm. like nothing wrong in it. You know, if it's your opinion, you can do what you want. And I literally, I just I went through his TikTok, and it's just like all Trump. It's shit. all mm -hmm. Trump. It's yeah. all Trump shit. Like. Literally, they no know what you want. No room for breathing for anything else. And then I have a one guy who would say he's like a he's a business guy, you know. And all of it is is like motivational quotes, or it's like you know, like you know those videos I'm talking about. Um, but like, it's crazy how like they just know you better than any. Like, it's than crazy. You know it's, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Their algorithm is so it's so stern. It's like, so they, personalized. The, yeah, it's designed to get you addicted. That's yeah. what's crazy. And I don't think we're. They just banned it in India. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, it. yeah, and it's it's different in different countries. Like, did you see that? In China, you're only allowed to use it during like certain hours of the yeah. day, and they'll only present you with like certain mm -hmm. types of content. And the contents that they show you in in China are like people accomplishing mm -hmm. great academic or intellectual feats, like somebody finds a way to get to space, or somebody yeah. you know does this ath athletic uh, move or whatever. When in the U.S., we use it at all times, and it's like. Bullshit. bullshit people yeah. fucking getting smacked with watermelons yeah. and they're doing dances and they're fucking and we're not doing designed, backflips and we're not designed to be like it's overwhelming all these videos and all these mm -hmm. like dopamine fucking hits all day like it's crazy what yeah. they can do to you yeah man like the dopamine hit is like you, like the human brain is not designed to be seeing like colorfulness 24 no. 7 or it's not designed day, to have no. like stuff or like in your ears all the time or it's not designed to I don't know, just have all this information. Isn't it crazy? Like only thirty years ago, like in the nineties, even like early two thousands, like y like what you were told is what you were told, and that's what that was the only way. And you yeah. you couldn't look up like oh like yeah. well, how is a is, how is a yeah. tr like a tree planted and like and like yeah like uh if you were told like same like you know I I kind of made this joke with my buddy the other day like how many people at a young age like don't believe in Santa Claus anymore. Oh like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like there's like, an abundance of information out there. Like you could be a 10 year old, like we were both referencing earlier, how we work at schools with young kids, like seeing these kids that they just whip out phones and they just go on TikTok and they're literally experiencing exactly what we're talking about. But at an age when we were that age, that was unfathomable. We didn't even think about half that. Shit <clears> we just didn't have it. Yeah, and there's like that whole new discussion right now where it's like 11 year olds or like 12 year olds are having iPhones. But, there's like two sides where it's like, I don't want my kid to have an iPhone because, you know, they have all this access to information, porn being one of them. Imagine being an 11 year old having porn. <laughs> I'd, be on, yeah. I'd be skipping school. Like, what yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, Think about that. Bro. I'm sick. Mom. I don't know I'm about y'all, but <laughs> I thought I invented jerking off, by the way. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. Bro, think about how dangerous porn is. Very dangerous. Very, very Think dangerous. Think about that. Very yeah. dangerous. You just have this. I'm off that now. I mean, now that I have a girlfriend, maybe if I wasn't, I'd be like a porn guy. Uh, <laughs> like, man, you know, don't get me wrong. That's something that we need to talk about more. And this is like yes. a Joe Let's Rogan do it thing. as some young men. Let's yeah, talk about the, the, the porn addiction in the, in the, in the community well, listen, of young like, men. That's something yes. that people don't talk about. But in it's real. In reality, bro, why do these videos have like 10 million views? It's every real. single it's an fucking addiction. video. It's an addiction. It's real. Just like like I understand else. why. Like, do I want to see some titties? Yeah, I want to see some titties. But it comes to a point where it's like, we know this kid in high school wasn't my friend but like that man would <laughs> go in class and he would go jerk off and shit. like that shit's like a whole new kind of like oh the man fuck it's is yeah. weird bro but like it's like imagine having like all this like just like information to your head and like being a parent it's like if i don't give a, if they don't have a phone at 12 or like 13 it's like they're gonna be the, the odd one out yeah. they're gonna be the left one you ever meet a kid who doesn't have instagram and like you just think to yourself, like they gotta be weird. Yeah, yeah. I always think that. I yeah. always think it's either they gotta be weird uh. or they just know themselves too well. But it's weird because at the same time, that's exactly what I feel like I would want for like myself or my kids. But you're definitely right. Like if you think about people that don't, like you definitely will treat had, them a different I, way. I had this kid. Chris brought me this kid. He was like, dude, this kid Jimmy's a stud. And before I like hop on meetings with people, I like to like just see their Instagram, like yeah. see what they look like, or do they work out? Like what are they doing with themselves? Right? Yeah. And he's like, oh, he doesn't have an Instagram. I'm like, <laughs> like. In full transparency, I was like, oh, I don't know if he's a good fit. But then, like, I was an idiot for thinking that because then I hopped on a call with yeah. him and I was like, oh, this kid's a beast. And I was like, it's pretty good. There's but a reason he doesn't have Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And, like, he was one of those top three kids I said is going to, like, at least make, like, 70 grand this summer. Yeah. Like, at least that kid's a dialed motherfucker. Like, same with you guys. He, he calls himself a, a perfectionist and all that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, back to this porn thing real quick. I got I got a serious Let's question. Talk right? <laughs> Let's talk about it, okay? What's with all the step shit? The stepmom, step sis shit. Like, what? it's all over the place, man. 
everywhere I look now, well, I see it. What's what? How mean, did that? How did that come about? I don't know, man. I but it's like. What's the attraction? To I that? see it like it's not like you have to search it. It's like the main category. Like when you open it, yeah. you just see it. And how do like, how do you think that evolved? Like how do you think that that became the new kink? Mm. I, I really wish I, I think because of COVID, yes. people have been stuck in their house yeah. and shit, and then like stuck around. Stuck I don't know what it is, fucking... but it's weird, and I think it's something we got to talk about because well, nobody talks well, about well, it. Well, hold on though, because and I'd be more than happy to get deeper. What's that. what's the rate now of divorce in marriages? Fucking, it's, I oh, think it's, it's like, like it's like around fifty percent. Ten years I think ago, it, is it was 50. fifty, so I don't even know what it'd be now. So it's probably significant now. So like probably like sixty now after COVID and shit. So it's trapped. It's probably likely that the average household probably has either a single parent yeah. or a step parent yes definitely. in the household yeah man and especially like i mean for us we're kind of fortunate we live in like you know bigger houses and stuff like that but if you're from like manhattan you live in a small apartment yeah. and your stepmom walking around looking all sexy you're like ooh, that's kind of bad it's like, and then they might have their own kids who yeah. are yeah. Who, who might she might have a hot step, <laughs> but it's like or the, a hot daughter. The or only reason or I a bring, hot son, yeah. whatever you're into, whatever. I mean, but the, for the viewers out there, the only reason I bring it up is not that I'm like interested in it. Well, obviously I'm interested in because we're talking about, it, but it's like they got like 10 million views, yeah. every single one of them. Well, also I think that human beings are attracted to controversy they're attracted to like the taboo yes yeah. yes 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 they yes. like so, being naughty yes. they like being they like they're like ooh whatever. Yes. Like, they, they, they get caught what's the saying it. it's like we all we, we always want something that we can't have yeah. or like something similar to that and so yeah. like everybody just i guess latches onto those weird fantasies and, the, and you know the the hook of all of those videos is always like we can't do this mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 or it's saying? dad's a dickhead, or yeah. like yeah, yeah. he's not home. Uh, he, your dad never pays attention to me. He's always at work, <laughs> and it's like it's like, yo, that's kind of hot. But then at the same time, it's like, why is that hot? And like, why do people watch it? Yeah, you know. And I don't know. It's just I'm not gonna lie though. I think like similar to how we were just talking about TikTok, I think them big crazy porn companies. Like I think they appeal to psychology. They oh, really for just sure. 100%. they really just market what they know people want, which is. That's also kind of odd in its own regard. And they probably, like, who fucking has a better gauge for, like, the weird shit that people are attracted to than a fucking big porn company? But it's dangerous, bro, because anything that, like, that, that comes for free, yeah, you think it's free, but it really comes with a price. Yeah, 100%. There's man. really a cost to, to, to always being on those sites. And I have a buddy that would rather jerk off than have sex, and I'm like... Well, wow. you're you're programming yourself to be on the sideline. Programming buzzword of the day. You're, you're programming, programming yourself to watch another guy yeah. fulfill the the primatal uh, instinct to go out and find a mate. Mm. You're programming yourself to watch that happen instead of developing uh, confidence and developing you know riz nowadays, <laughs> right? And going, and, going and, and meeting a woman and and the unspoken and. and you know, <laughs> charisma and going forward with developing relationships. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into that. And that's why that's like Darwinism. Like that's like, amen to that. That's yeah. like, you know, the, the survival of the fittest. I asked my dad this. I was like, yeah, like some incel shit. I was like, yo dad, he was like he born sixties, like raised teenager in like the eighties and stuff like that. Or like late early eighties and stuff. And I was like, yo dad, do you think like, like you and my, like the sixties era, do you think you guys had more sex or our era? And here I'm thinking our era, because you have all these dating apps and stuff now, like Tinder, Bumble, whatever the whatever right, right. you want to call it. And I thought it was going to be ours. And then he said, us. And I was like, what do you mean, us? He's like, Zach, you know how there's, you know how you have a phone right now? I'm like, yeah. You know how there's like a camera on that? Yeah. And he's like, you know how when you go in the woodlands, there's like a camera right there? 40, 50 years ago, there was no cameras. Yeah. You could literally just meet a girl in a bar, bring her in the in the bathroom and just fuck her and walk out. And no, there'd be no video. Nobody there. would ever know. So and then I looked it up and I, and it was like way higher than I thought, like from back then. And so I just think with all like this, you know, quick access to like whatever you want is just so damaging because even like with salesmen, like the, the reason why I think people like to buy off door to door salesmen is because they could like they could talk and in today's world it's hard to find someone that can like hold a conversation yeah. let alone main like maintain eye contact yeah. or like you know have good tonality and stuff so in reality i just think it, we have too much access in today's world like 
Imagine like being like a 12 year old girl or 11 year old girl and you're scrolling through TikTok and you see like this beautiful 10 out of 10 just dancing right there. What do yeah. you think that 12 year old girl saying? It's like, I have to be that. Yeah. And then what happens? They keep comparing themselves to that yep. person. And then slowly or surely they just start to, you know, get depressed and depressed. sad and sad. Yep. And the suicide rate today was like insane compared to like, I, th I don't know. Mm. We could, I wish we had a Jamie. Jamie, what's the. What's the suicide? Well, right we did. Now? It's my brother yeah, Xavier no. who decided to fuck off and not come today. So. Ah, really? Yeah. Sure, sure. Oh, no, we would, I would love a JMO right now. <laughs> What's his one? name? What's his name? Xavier, and it's funny because my mom's name is Jamie, so I always call him like I always call him like the young Jamie. JMO, JMO. Yeah, no, the, I do have here. Um, it it, it can, like talking about how like we're having less sex. Yeah. I think men now have lower levels of testosterone too. Yeah. Saw that, yeah. Talk but more about that. Yeah. Also, why? though, well, why though? Why do men aren't have more levels of testosterone? Well, I was gonna say to kind of combat that same, not that theory, but the other theory that we're having less sex today than we used to. I, I believe that there's more babies born every year today than there's ever been in the history that mm. we is recorded. So mm. that's interesting. Maybe that's not necessarily <laughs> more sex, but more successful sex. I'll say because uh, you're actually having kids and you're not just like I'm trying fucking to like, for think pleasure. in my head right now how to like <laughs> come back work? with that. Yeah. That's Maybe. interesting. Well, I mean, we could be, I and mean, there's more people today, though. Yeah. yeah. So there's definitely more, like, options. More of an opportunity. Yeah. Right. There's more people, and also, they're, like, the, the, the advancement that we've made in medicine makes it easier to have kids. Like, if you're infertile, you can still find a way to have a kid, you know? I don't know if that. If, if that's I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, just, it wouldn't be your baby. Well, I think what the whole. Or was, you just couldn't have a baby. Like if you're shooting blanks back in the '60s, like yeah. you're fucked, buddy. Like yeah. you're not having a kid. <laughs> Today we could figure it out. Like, Get a kid could. from Ethiopia, starving Marvin. No, but you could like, you could update your sack type <laughs> shit. Yeah. Update you your could, sack, yeah, bro. You could update that's your a clip. Sack. Oh, that's a clip. Don't do that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not update your sack, but you could do something to your sperm to make it fertile. Uh -huh. Same thing with women. Like you could fertilize eggs. Yeah. Uh -huh. And people who are naturally infertile. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe that does nothing to this conversation, but I don't know. That's all they had to say. I think there. I mean, every like both of those points though, like about just more people being born now and people having more sex back then. I think that there's ways that you can make both of those statements true. But I just don't think we understand it enough. It's way, it's, it's just, like, listen, man. At the end of the day, like, we're only in the year 2023, too. So if you look at, it's cool to say that, 2023. Yeah. That's the first time I feel like I said that, and, like, since the new year. And it's real. But uh, it's cool to think, like, just the the amount of technology that has been instated in the past mm. Let's even just say five years, man. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's say if you fifteen to twenty years, like Google wasn't a thing in like nineteen ninety two. Yeah. Like you couldn't just look something up and find it, and like not everybody had a fucking computer in their. The pocket. first yeah. iPhone, I believe, was invented in two thousand seven. Yeah, and it was shitty. I mean, it still worked and stuff, but compared to what your mm -hmm. iPhone can do now, yeah, it's insane. Oh my, think about where the fuck that's came. I could literally do this, and let me see if I'm bullshitting, but I'm pretty sure if I go like this, I can like have. An emergency yeah. SOS, like uh, as in like an ambulance slash cops yeah. come on its way. What's that one? That's I've never seen the top one. What's a medical ID? I think that's. Uh, I, see, I don't even. I don't even know. Maybe <laughs> that's when, like, if you're passed out yeah. and you have the information filled in there, I can click your shit five times and swipe it. And I can get like your blood type. Oh, wow. Top of that, you knew that. <laughs> Maybe no. That's a guess. I thought I someone know. in jujitsu like choked down and they're like, <laughs> click, click my Pop iPhone. Like, no. like, well, I click my iPhone. Trust me. That's but then you think of like, cause I have a, I have an Apple watch, for example, that I can go on an app on my Apple watch. That should tell me my exact heart rate at this exact time. I'm like, scared to get like, an Apple watch, man, because like I, when I work out, I don't like to use my phone. Like, yeah. I, like I put it in the locker or whatever. Just, it's like me time, like focus on yourself. And if I had an Apple watch, just getting text and stuff like that. Now I see the benefits yeah. of an Apple watch. Cause it, like you said, heart rate, temperature, yeah. whatever it mm -hmm. is. But um, it's just scary how like technology is and we're just like we were that first generation bro where we growing up we didn't have it and then well like uh, not really well, though what I, what, I, what I try to mean is like until like seventh grade kind of like we went kind of first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth without mm. an ipad like, we weren't ipad yeah. babies though. yeah exactly i like, was just talking to one of my friends the other day we were like the last generations of kids that like went out and like rode bikes and played manhunt and were playing hide and seek and like those kinds of we were the last like generation of kids that actually went outside and played with their friends right? and, and all kids are fat now like dude yeah. my cousins are fat fucks fat. Yeah. i call them out all the time and i'm, I'm seeing them tonight so i'm gonna call you out again mm. but basically uh dude like like in this, I never was. I was never a video game guy. Like I was, I only played it like uh, when I was on that trip to Jamaica, and I realized, okay, this is too. This is too like, 
too addicting. Mm. And I learned that at a young age, but my brother was like addicted forever. But dude, like during that like Fortnite age, man, like my cousins, all they would do is play. All they would do is play. All they do and they and they were like six, eight at the time. Yeah. So it's like they didn't like you said, manhunt. Like they didn't even know what manhunt no. was, bro. I had to teach them that. Yeah. And I was like, How the fuck you not know what manhunt it's is? It's a staple, bro. Yeah. We were we were fucking breaking into abandoned buildings and exploring shit yeah. when we were like fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Like that's what we were doing. To like when I cried when I was younger, I'm talking like four years old now. Like my parents learned how to deal with me crying. They just didn't hand me a fucking 12 inch screen mm-hmm. and say, just tap until you feel better. And yeah. then, oh. yeah. and then what happens is your mind gets triggered to that. Mm. So now it becomes a habit. Like, yeah. And they say it takes 17, 18 days to develop a habit. So let's say that baby's crying and your babies cry a lot and you just keep handing that app. I keep handing that. He's going to become addicted to that. And, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm addicted. Like, I think we yeah. all are, man. Yeah. And, but it just comes to like coming to that realization that you have to, uh, you just gotta like, you, you just gotta like execute on the bad habits to the, you just have to execute on the bad habits so like you you just ultimately have a better life. I have a, a quick quote real quick that I actually sent all my reps yesterday. I just have to find it real quick. It was create resistance in front of your poor habits and remove resistance in front of your good habits. Mm. So I'll repeat it again. I like that. Create resistance in front of your poor habits and remove resistance in front of your good habits. Mm. Yeah, ben, Benny Frank said be at war with your vices. Mm. Shout out my boy. He made yeah. the specs. He, yeah. made, he made the glasses. Yeah. My guy. Yeah. Worked on the Constitution too, right? Yeah, I That's think I went. think electricity. I don't know. Yeah, he's done a lot of shit. <laughs> I think he's on. Yeah, war with your vices. I think yeah. he's on a the dollar bill. No, okay. Shout out my boy Ben Franklin. Yeah. That's like the mission I'm on right now. I'm trying to like find all like the little things that I guess you don't perceive to be as bad for you as they are at a certain point in life. But then like where I'm at right now, I realize how bad those things actually were. Like from for me, my biggest one was just that eating. Like just bad yeah recently i fucking i started eating way better i'm eating grilled chicken every day salads broccoli fucking just getting after it that way i lost fucking 15 pounds in two weeks that, <laughs> okay that's insane to think about yeah and another thing too and maybe coming from like an area where it's like there's not a lot of money compared to like you know a major city like philly or yeah. like i don't know like detroit or like miami or whatever like let's say the average person makes 36 grand a year okay which is apparently true whatever when you only have thirty six thousand dollars for your name, and like, let's say you're working two jobs, three jobs, whatever the situation is, and your kids are hungry, like now the quick outlet, escape go, just go to McDonald's, mm, yep. go to Burger King, let's go to f- like, f- whatever. F- I don't even, I don't eat fast foods. So I don't even know, but like, it's just crazy to think that like the, especially the bottom of the barrel, which is like the majority of America, it's like they're only, so, they only eat fucking fast food, yep. and and that's why all these kids are fat because you you. When you combine the two of eating fast food and you combined the the video games and not going out, not getting that. Yeah, remember that? Remember that commercial on like Disney Channel growing up? It was hour of play. Remember? Yeah, sixty minutes a day. Yeah, oh, remember that? the NFL yeah. things that you're talking about? The, it could have been. I don't know, but it was on Disney. Ch- if it's yeah. like an hour, yeah, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. I don't see that anymore. No, no. Yeah. And how come, like, during COVID, bro, like, no one was, like, kind of, like, highlighting the fact yeah. that you're supposed to get, like, exercise and I, eat healthy and all that? I know you fuck with Joe Rogan. Did you see the study that he just posted on his Instagram yesterday about yeah. the dude, nutrition yeah, they, pyramid? Put, I put it, yeah, dude. They, that is fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> what the fuck are they trying to do? It put bro. Lucky charms. I just think, I, I think there's lizard people at the top, <laughs> the Rothschilds, whatever their names are, right? That are truly just yeah, like trying Black to like, Rock Resorts. I think yeah, I investment. think they're just trying to destroy humanity as we know it. I think but they're like, trying to divide and conquer. How, like, that's what how can you put that on a like? I mean, I think this question is deeper than like what I'm really trying to ask. But like, how can you put that information on a fucking piece of paper and submit that to the world? Uh, How someone, the fuck someone, are you someone to got that? fired. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Someone got <laughs> fired, man. And it goes to show. It's like I don't know if you guys ever watched The Walking Dead, but I watched like the yeah. first couple seasons, man. And in reality, who who beat it? Who was it? The zombies that really killed the the people? No, no it was people. It was the people that went after the people. Selfish people. Yeah. So I think uh, what's really happening out there is people are just. It's just, especially after the whole Trump election and stuff. How like the world really got divided, yeah. including COVID and all mm. that. I just think that they're just trying to, like, I don't know who it is. I don't know who's trying or what it is, yeah. if there's, like, a, a secret society or whatever the situation mm. may be. But, like, if there even is, why are they trying to divide us? Yeah. Like, why, like, especially right at, what was it? It was it was during the COVID, the first early months of COVID, from what I remember. Keep in mind, I was on the beaches in Israel, so like, I don't really remember that much from it. But, like, 
from what I've been told, is the world was like very together. It was kind of like right after nine yeah. eleven. Everybody was like, "We're in this together," you know, like a sta- like a family aspect. Mm. But then right after the whole George Floyd thing, that's like when shit got deep and when yeah. people were going at it. Like at right when right when the Trump election was happening, everybody was always going at it. But then COVID came and there was like a small so moment, much. but there was a small moment of like unity and camaraderie. Yeah. And then right when that George Floyd thing happened, everybody just mm. started going right back at yep. it. It was like self fire, like shooting yourself in the foot kind of, but, um, I don't know. It, it, we live in a fucked up world, but which kind of leads to like, just focus on yourself. Yeah. And, um, like, why do I care what they're doing, what you're doing, what they're doing? It's like, just focus on yourself. And if you focus on yourself, then if you just do the little things, um, you'll be happy. And, yeah. uh, I don't know. It goes it goes a long way, but I know we're rambling now. But yeah, let's go and get in that fucking ice bath, bro. I want to? Yeah, I mean, we've we been going for a while. It's like two fifteen. It's a good pod. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah well, thank you for having me, guys. Dude, I appreciate the yeah. invite, man. Talk about your uh, where where we where we can plug you at, where we can find you, what you want to highlight. Yeah, sure, man. But at the end of the video. So, like I said, man, at the end of the day, grit marketing changed my life. Um, shout you, out grit. Shout out grit. You literally work three, four months out of the year, and if you're good at it. Literally, the money is there, the skill set's there, and the networking is there. Um, yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Z-A-K underscore K-O-R-N-F-E-L-D. Um, and yeah, man, like, just focus on yourself. Keep striving. If you ever want to just hang out with me, I'll let you know. Ah, cool, man. Fuck right, it. We're about to get this cold plunge. <laughs> Zach, thank you for being here, brother. Thank thank you, bro. thank this is a fucking banger pod. Much love, everybody. We'll get podcast. Peace. Check it the fuck out. <laughs>